uh, we are doing uh, something special. Uh, we originally intended to post the first season, but due to technical difficulties and ghost files, <laughs> um, we're going to be starting with the second season. Uh, so it's been a little over a year since we started the first season. So first we're going to have a little bit of a story so far. We're going to go over the notes and see how people remember this. This will be great. Uh, Alright, so I am Nock. I'll be running the game. We have Kyle, who originally was playing Ezio, the Knight of uh, Wandering Hills. Now he is playing Oscar. The Night of Wandering Hills. Things uh, happen. Things happen. We'll get there. Um, coma. Spoiler God. Coma, 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 chameleon. Uh, this is B, who is playing the Exorcist Pyre, who is now Saint Pyre. The Saint formerly known as <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I need to make my own symbol. Possessed. <laughs> I'm going to do this now. Yep. This is important. Uh, uh, then there's Greg. With hi, Greg, because they see me doing this, but they don't <laughs> no, necessarily have which, one, of which one I'm actually pointing to. Um, it's the man. <laughs> yeah, it's the one with the man bun. Um, <laughs> it's an epic fail, what can I say? <laughs> but I mean, at least, uh, you know, I'm just going to watch he's, it. He's playing the old man, uh, prince of the kingdom, which is not meaning he's royalty, it's just high respects for what his character accomplished during a war. Um, he is a prince of the cell, uh, spell swords. Um, and then there's Dennis, currently with Chips and Dip. Playing a Abuse. Of Varix. It's from Oh, Shit! I'm Oscar from Varix. Oh, God. Uh, and then the master sorcerer, Albrecht uh, Hitherin, yep. played by Jeff, uh, who is actually, by the end of the first season, now the headmaster of the College of Magic. <laughs> I like how Nock just glosses over my character advancement. It's like, yeah, you'll find out. You'll find out. <laughs> you'll Stuff out. happens. Uh, some characters lost an arm for it. And an arm. And then the eye yeah, was lost later. It's okay. Oh no, it was, it was my arm. Just as a warning, many yeah. bodily... It was his sword arm. Because it, it was the sword arm? Be made. No, it was your off arm. It okay. was your spell working arm. Yes. 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 So many cards. Because it was, it was. We did that on purpose because it was supposed to be an impactful uh, loss. Oh, that's right. I remember how you lost it for your because. <laughs> I'm a sense. And we'll see if you remember when we get there. We'll see if you remember what the knowledge was. Okay. All right. I don't even remember that. I was like, yeah, it wasn't worth it. So originally, <laughs> it was the year 1058, Exton calendar. In the late spring. 1,058 years after the themes of Runa unified the wonder of crimes and its sold government. <laughs> yeah. Um, everybody who had uh, met each other at least once in the pre game era. Um, so they all were called forward to uh, Renata Frower's estate. Uh, who is the Lady of the Crown, basically the right hand to the Queen, um, uh, in which Ezio uh, arrived, followed by Albrecht, then Pyre, then Grey, and Amenius, uh, fashionably lit. Which is, like, right on time. Yep. They're on Kingdom military time. Showing up on time, fashionably. <laughs> yeah. Gruff. Uh, do all. Uh, who wants to go over the meeting with Renata Frown? If I remember correctly, there was something about something running amongst the darks and fairies. There was a thing um, from fairies that had been stealing shit and leaving symbols behind. And so we had been assembled. We strange and motley crew. 
had been assembled to go investigate this thing. What with an exorcist, a spell sword, a sorcerer, a knight to protect us all, and a menius. We were sent off. In the in the six days to travel from from Fang's Keep, you traveled to Lons, the the city or town of Lons, and then from there you finished uh, the two day two remaining days of the trip to Barracks. Mm -hmm. uh, you did research on the on different types of creatures. Uh, it was sussed out to be a spirit through your research. Pyre got that it was either a natural occurrence or an unwanted something. So it was not intentional, or the spirit is there from some other means outside of something. Um, they, the party did make it safe to Barracks and the Kaifax Estates uh, in order to speak with Ursula, the master artisan of Barracks, which is a city of artisans. So all of the things that were being stolen are works of art, works of art, art. crafts cool. materials. Um, Actually, no, no tools. No tools. It no, was all no, material. Was things. It was, what? It was all materials to make things, but none of the tools to make them. Mm -hmm. So Albrecht found out about the boat and told them about the boat. Gray told them about the order of the the thefts, which started at the pier, uh, which then painted for the party a clear picture of where the spirit came from. Well, yeah, there was that kid that tried to pick up in too. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Which yeah. then puppy dog dot puppy eye dog puppy, puppy dog eye eye <laughs> Ezio in the letting him go. Now they start talking to you. It's really not hard to hear. We love you. Yeah. Uh, so from from the painter's summit, uh, you guys went to a sawmill to investigate the aura of the spirit, um, as it was the most recent theft in the artisans district. Uh, the owner, a woman in her late forties, uh, with an aura of determination, gave the party permission to go into where the theft was uh, committed uh, to investigate. Now I did skip over the important part about the Painter's Hill Summit, which is where we actually have a picture painted of us. Yes! That, that did happen. Uh... Do, 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 mm -hmm. The spirit came later, didn't you? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, he's so cute with his little leaf! Yeah, we discovered that it was a spirit of traveling... Yes. Yeah, from... At the sawmill. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we did to the symbol at the summit. Yeah. Okay. We right. And we symbols. looked at the other symbols. I think Albert. No. Yeah. I think Gray got the, the symbols. Yeah. Someone got the symbols from the other locations too because they yeah. wrote them down. Uh, wasn't it you? Yeah. Was you, you were given the pieces of paper that had the symbols. Yes, I was given them. But then, I think then Pyre, Pyre, them. Pyre pieced them together into okay. the one symbol that it was it was really one symbol broken into five parts. And it was repeating, yeah, I remember yeah. it was a repeating pattern. Yep. Um, then you guys had afternoon tea. As you do. Uh, <laughs> you do? <laughs> yeah, because there was, there was conspicuous, uh, a, a conspicuous roll with five successes. So, uh, Amenius did that to make sure Painters uh, knew the prince was there yeah. having a picnic. So there were numerous paintings of the prince. You guys also found out about uh, elven artifacts that were stolen that were responsible for the uh, elven incursion, which is the war you fought in. Um, the flute of shaping, flesh needles, and the singing sword. Okay, so the next so session was a lot options. of a lot of investigation, and using the prince's credentials, you guys got through the pier and onto the dock. You guys got the list. Do yeah, we have the skirmish on the boat? There was That's a skirmish on the boat. What did you guys fight? Uh, I think skeletons. Oh, skeleton. Yep. Oh, oh my god. Yep. Our stealth is gonna <laughs> fail. We tried to stealth and our commander failed us. And, and rush at the same time. That was no, no, my no. idea. No, no, no. You made this plan. Onto the boat. No, no, no. No, that, that comes later. That was okay. Yeah, we, that we, comes we were later. gonna that comes later. we were gonna flank and stealth, but that instead we 
Yeah, no, that, that's, that's later. later. That's that's later. This one we actually oh, succeeded like for the most part to actually stealth and take them out. Yeah. Because we took yep. them out rather quickly. Yep. yep. Yes, you guys did. did manage to ambush the skeletons on the boat. Um, they couldn't see shit. It wasn't very hard. They're skeletons. They're <laughs> skeletons. Sorry, uh, but it was skeletons weird. in the audience. Because uh, this is one of the first times un an actual undead was seen and fought. Necromancy is where go. Uh, yeah. Necromancy is very much banned and Face extremely difficult to get a hold of, Face let alone learn. Piracy! Um, yes. Uh, you guys then managed to get the. Uh, what was it? What's that called? The dossier? The manifest. The manifest. The manifest. The manifest. The manifest. The manifest also put one Captain Hefion Krim with 12 sailors, 8 deckhands, and one quartermaster named Vivian Heck. And the important one. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. So there was, there was 22 crew total on the boat. You found five corpses that were thus reanimated skeletons that you dispatched, and thus have 17 unaccounted for corpses as there were no others on the ship. Um, the manifest, the last thing on the manifest was one passenger named Prisander Highwater uh, with a note stating that he paid 100,000 gold uh, for discretion and transportation. Prisander Highwater is the previous high, uh, headmaster of the school was headmaster of the school when uh, Albrecht was a child first attending the school. Yep. But a wee young lad. He's but a wee, wee young baby. lad. It's hard to like, imagine um, Albrecht with a baby face. <laughs> Albrecht with a baby face. Uh, who mysteriously disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Very mystery, mystery. Yes. Uh, Albrecht uh, was the first one to discover the disappearance of Highwater as he was delivering breakfast um, and as he was approaching heard what sounded like a scuffle, and came into an empty room with blood and basically trash, uh, and no one there. And high water has not been seen since. So we did notice the symbol on the ceiling too, and Pyre actually did the summoning uh, and uh, summoned the travel spirit Keo. If you would like to describe. He's so small. He's so tiny, and I believe he had like a little teacup on his head. Yes. And it he has a tiny, tiny leak. Oh my god, this thing. Essentially a Kodama. It's, it's so, so goddamn cute. cute. Literally, any ovaries in the audience, y'all would explode. <laughs> if you saw. And that's Keo in a nutshell. Fan art, go. <laughs> Yo! Yeah, you go do that, internet. <laughs> What so Keo then makes a pact with the group and becomes the group's spirit of travel. So then the next couple days, Gray Karak uh, went to report to the Spell Knights, update the Spell Knights, get more information, do a little research in the Spell Knight libraries, etc. Um, the uh, group then met up with Sebastian the Wanderer, uh, a sorcerer and wandering wizard, with an obscure aura, who was the Baron's grandson. Uh, the Baron with tattoos on his face? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, I nicknamed him Prince. That Lord. asshole. Swordface. Swordface? Sword he was, he was the one that. Uh, he stayed with tricks, the Elves for like a while. Yeah. Yes. He's uh, Baron Victor Esifraz. Yes. Uh, hero of the people. Um, was a hero of the Elven excursion. Uh, to include considered a hero by the elves. Um, Noble figures for bringing peace. Yes. And so the elves actually brought him to their land and actually taught him their ways. Um, he done learned things. He done learned things. He is a done learned man. He's in his late 70s, very wise, and called a menius out. Bullshit. <laughs> Uh, he is also referred to as the Knight of Elves. Um, fun thing about the Elven Incursion, uh, Elves are effectively immortal, um, and death weighs heavily on them. Um, 
especially when they're the cause of something's death. Uh, so the elves invaded the lands of Eshka, uh, the Eshkin kingdom, uh, with non... What's the word? Fatal? Non-fatal weapons. Non-lethal non weapons. Yeah. So they had, like, all of their blades were wood. So they had wooden swords, wooden halberds, uh, things like that. They would knock humans out. So effectively, I mean, during the elven slot. incursion, there were very few human okay. deaths. Princess Gregg's best princess. Princess Gregg's cool. best princess. <laughs> I wish it's very bad. That's, 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 that's a history right? session, though. I wish that, oh my god, that was beautiful. <laughs> Uh, so Sebastian the Wanderer brought news. Does anybody remember what that news was that he brought with him? Uh, oh, my village uh, was taken. Uh, Heavily hit by a necromancer yeah. who has turned north and is crossing Ten Dao's range. Um, basically killed almost the entire village and rose them all up as additional zombies and skeletons and grew his army and continued to march north. Uh, Sebastian came with a wired box um, that contained the skull of an undead. I still have the box running. Yeah. Uh, that was a box. Yeah, that was April 12th. Uh, it wasn't the talking skull initially. <laughs> <laughs> it was not. It was just a skull. <laughs> it was the skull Shenanigans. <laughs> that belonged to an undead creature and had a necromancer's death magic aura still lingering around it and still had the soul trapped inside of it. If I recall, it was pretty pissed off. It was very pissed off. Really pissed off. Yeah, yeah. There was a, uh, you guys did some weird <clears> shit. <throat> failed at your exorcism or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah at least there's no spiral in this. It's fine. Womp womp. Uh, uh, might as well be. Mariachi <laughs> band. I see a running theme. Confirmation of the undead army going through Tendao's mountain range came in the form of two tro horned trolls that were displaced from the mountains <laughs> down into the city where Ezio was put into his first coma. <laughs> Thank you, Lightning Bolt, from our wizard. <laughs> lightning Bolt, hey, hit a troll. To be fair, it was fate because I chained Lightning one, it bounced off of that one and then hit him. Luckily, it also bounced off him and hit the other one, so. It took both the trolls know, down just, for a little while. Yeah. And you for even longer. I was only <laughs> gone for a year and a half. You had five extra successes on that lightning. Game. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, yeah. fate. Sure, that's fate. You, you tell I barely yourself. stayed alive. Yeah, you, you, you had to take 19 months to recover. Uh, I was out for a year and a half. And absolutely nobody wrote balls on his forehead. Not, not oh. a single one. No. Nope. Yeah, we go from. We're all adults here. April 13th, 10:58 e to November 15th, 1059. Yep. So, so, the party decided to to stay in barracks during the recovery of Ezio. Those were nice. I love it. Uh, they helped, in that downtime, they, they studied, they trained, they helped restore the peace of barracks, uh, they helped send stuff guards. to the other vill the village that was taken, um. Oh, for the audience at home, by the way, the skull, yes, there was shenaniganry with the skull before the trolls happened. Yes. We, we did things, the skull became animate, the skull gave us information. <laughs> That's the two long degree. Sometimes you just don't question your sources and you just accept what they tell you. That's what I did. You always do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's because I meant to. <laughs> so, uh, I meant to. <laughs> so a report came to the prince from the spell knight Roy Gilder, who was head of the Tyam uh, City Watch, uh, that they had seen uh, an army of abominations camping in the Kismak Forest, while the battalion <laughs> branched off and oh, headed yep. north yep. to the east of Exton's border. This is where everything turns pear shaped. <laughs> it could have gone more pear. It's. There's also I'm was like, girl, what are you saying? I'm just gonna. We defeated them. Look. So yeah, no, we'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll, get, we'll there. get there. Someone texted the, me. There's also the other battalion, right? So the the undead broke into two battalions that that the group knew of so far. 
One in Kismet Forest, and one heading to the north, just on the east side of the Exton's border. Um, they wrote, Amini, and by they I mean Amenius, yeah. wrote in the prince's name to have a battalion sent to Tayam, and a battalion sent to um, Epsoin. Uh, two nearby uh, cities or towns that uh, Amenius believed to be targets uh, by these undead battalions. If you in the audience are wondering why Amenius is giving these orders or why he believes these things in the way that he does, hold on to those questions. We'll get there. We'll get there. Also, so on the Obsidian Portal link below, uh, there is a map of, so you can see of the Exton Kingdom. Um, well, like, why is the whore giving out military information and orders? Why is the whore <laughs> you know giving what? out military That's a great question. Hold on to that one. Hold on. Okay, it's fine. So, there was also uh, Tac Tac. Uh, defenses of Tac Tac are good as it's a fort surrounded by a city. Uh, oh, yes, that's right. You guys also hired 10 swordsmen slash infantry <laughs> oh, and no. 6 archers. To go with you into Kismak Forest well, to confront the undead uh, camp that had set up there. But how well did that work out for us? No, not? I want you all to know that I was perfectly willing to leave them in obscurity so that you never knew the horrible things that happened to them. Oh no 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 horrible it wasn't things! Wasn't my fault there. We don't obviously here. Two live. Two live. Wrong way. Two. <laughs> Two. Two. So, uh, you guys ride north. Uh, you guys. Ride hard for 21 hours to get there. <laughs> don't okay, drip. Part. Don't, <laughs> don't drop the fucking sake. Don't drop the sake. Professional. Uh, after, professional. after a little scouting, it was determined that there was approximately a hundred undead creatures uh, being led by one Captain Raswald. Oh, no. <laughs> a, a member of the Wandering Knights that was recognized by Ezio and was in charge of the defenses at the uh, village that was destroyed. Who is now very much obviously undead and directing other undead in their duties. Our uh, first uh, overly intelligent undead that we've encountered. Yes. Uh, you, the party split into two groups. Uh, <laughs> yeah. to try and the party had a plan. So the party in had the a very nice plan. <laughs> the two groups, Great Tarant was to lead one, and Ezio was to lead the other, and the plan was orchestrated by Amenius. What was that plan? We would... Oh, wait. One group would sneak, one group would distract. Yes. Yeah. So that, okay, there was, yes, so, so, Ezio and Amenius, I think, were on the distract, this, the distraction team. No, we were on the It was flank. you and Albrecht. Me and Albrecht. on range. Yeah. That's right, okay, yeah. so Albrecht and I were on the, the, the distraction team. There was effectively three groups. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we had the, the you, ten, the you both, 20 people. Yeah. Effectively, group one and two, led by you two, was to sneak in. Well, Albrecht and Amenius uh, played distractions. It was sneak and flame. And you were going to go in because of your powers as an exorcist. Yeah. Yes. I made sure that there was one person of faith in every group, so that instead of having to fight the undead, we could just spell jam in. Because we can do that with faith. You shut your whore mouth. I don't think I'm I not have more of those relationships. <laughs> <laughs> True. Oh. No, it was you and I. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was both of us. You we were and I. Flanking, and then you had flanking. these two. Okay. Okay. You and okay. I were not flanking though. You and I were the distraction. Oh. Right. Needless to there say, there was no flanking. We had in the a plan. plan. No, no, no. There was a plan. There was a plan. In it was the, the plan, there was no flanking. flanking. Was oh, that's right. There was no flanking. No, the flanking was the fuck up. Yes. Yeah. So the plan was one group would distract the horde. While the other group snuck around and basically spelled him the shit out of them. Like, just walked up to the fucking Captain whatever fuck face. Raswell. Whatever. <laughs> Here's a name! And then just. Fuck you, stop it! 
Yeah. And then the rest of the army would fall apart. Because they're undead, and that's how it works. But in theory, theory, actually. Full disclosure, no one in the party at this point has any idea if that's how it worked or not, but we're gonna fucking try it because the other option is a five to one raffle stomp. Not in our favor. At least, even if, because uh, the plan was, even if killing the captain didn't d just cause them to crumple, they at least wouldn't have an intelligent tactician move, uh, maneuvering a mass horde of undead. Kill the queen bee. That's yes. That was the, the plan. plan. Mm -hmm. So I have everybody marked down. I have the two team leaders marked down what they're doing. I marked down what my guys are doing. My guys weren't doing much because they hadn't detected the group yet. Um, what was your first actions? Fight! Fight. Right, they just went running at a 40, like 90 degree angles. Because for the audience at home, flank is not a stealth maneuver. To be fair, I thought we had space, like no, no. enough space between it's okay. them and us. The moment, <laughs> and then we could sneak in, the moment like flank, and then sneak in. But it was flank, get caught, and then just charge. Did you <laughs> actually, like, really notice? No, I was gonna say if you were just no, first time. Hand, no, no, they noticed. <laughs> they noticed. Yeah, they yeah, succeeded they at all of their perception rolls. Yeah, they didn't have a high perception. And, and uh, <laughs> who had to save everybody? I mean, yes. Oh, yes, yeah, but so, but we're yeah. not there yet. Yeah. Oh God! So the fight was all right at first. They they were waiting through some undead uh, because they they still had a little bit of time before the undead really started to react. Because the first time they got spotted was when they moved into the flank position, and so the undead was still kind of dispersed about the area. Some doing things. Some just kind of like leaning leaning against trees or sitting on the ground, like. I got nothing to do. <laughs> My life's boring. I'm dead. Uh, I mean, I'm like um, dead. What are you gonna undead? <laughs> do? Oh, right. Fuck. Um, the gray area. And then <laughs> the captain started giving orders, and and basically the the group of undead split into two, one going after Ezio's group, one going after Prince Tarant's group. Um, at that point, uh. Some tactical decisions were made by the non-tacticians, and a majority of the uh, infantry and archers that were brought along were killed. Fucking murdered. Yeah, they're Remember that five to one raffle stop? Not in our favor. I was talking about. Guess what? <laughs> Ta -da! Five to one raffle stop. We lost all but two bowmen. And all of our soldiers. And so you're just all right. I'm, I'm just gonna start paving my way through. There was there was one point where Amenius, uh, oh yeah, gave died. hope to oh. a dying swordsman right. mm -hmm. by leaning down with his faith and changed the tide of the battle <laughs> by <laughs> sacrificing him. As yeah. you do. As a reminder, Amenius is on the battlefield. People are dying all around him. And out of everyone in the group, which, for those who were not present at that session, I think I mentioned at least three times, we're taking too many casualties. <laughs> we're taking too many casualties. We're taking too many casualties. Everyone's just like, no, it's fine. They're just NPCs. Who the fuck cares? They're people! <laughs> the four finally... Explaining, it's a fucking necromancer. <laughs> Zero casualties is ideal. <laughs> One is too many. <laughs> what happens to each of our guys that the necromancer kills? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Amelius realizes that the stupidity is rampant beyond any possible hope of salvation. And decides to do the unthinkable. He calls upon his faith, sacrifices a poor dying swordsman He's to fine. sanctify the ground against sorcery. He's fine. He would have died anyway. It's fine. He actually would have died anyways. I mean, he just tells him he's going to die no matter what. It's just fine. Just he would have quicker. lived with a little bit of uh, medical as, attention. As a side note. <laughs> just a little. Just a little bit of medical attention. As a side note, no one sees it. No one saw it. 
It was great. <laughs> Fucking glorious. However, then on my next turn, when it comes to be a Venus's turn, oh, then the fight progresses. Ezio makes it up to bus. Has basically plowed through the ranks, <laughs> cutting a channel directly to the captain. I'm going to cut off his head. <laughs> Ezio doesn't have faith. Meanwhile, the captain was the only undead strong enough to survive the sanctification of the forest's ground. Uh, so the uh, most of the other undead were, were were pretty much crumpling. Yeah, they were not having a great time, but still capable of murdering us, or at least Aminius. Yeah. Uh, they had penalties, but they were not out. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, take so while the rest of the party took care of the horde... Right. No, 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 no. <laughs> meanwhile, the rest of the party is dithering three range bands back while our exorcist uh, eh. <laughs> is nowhere near close enough to actually exorcise the captain. It comes <laughs> to Aminius' turn. Nope. Aminius proceeds to lose his shit <laughs> in the middle of the battle. And we're not talking about, like, the fearful panic of, like, oh my god! We're doomed! No, anger. he just starts yelling at everybody. <laughs> I'm Blame. sad that the audience doesn't have that footage because oh my god, one, it was two minutes of me literally yelling at the other player. We have there has to be a way. We need this footage in. We need this footage on the internet to the point where Ezio finally just takes Aminius's turn. <laughs> yes. Like mm, you know what? He's busy. Aminius sacrificed his his pre-planned move. For Rent. 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 all. <laughs> now, Amenius is also at this point covered in blood and gore. He's angry. One of his outfits was just ruined. Ruined! Actually, that's impossible. Actually, no, it was a battle suit. I knew it. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay, yeah. no, you're right. That's why I ruined His skin was. Oh, I know how that is. So, it's, fi it's fine. So then Ezio. Presents it battle well. To the captain. Yeah. I mean, oh, no, he And starts going into a fight oh, with the captain. They both script simultaneously to do a heavy strike. They both double fist their swords and swing with all their might. Ezio comes up and slices half of the captain's head off. Actually, the next one, I think, was that one. No, it was this one. Oh, really? It was the first one strike? Yeah. No, it was, there was a, like, no, there was, like, batter back and forth. And then murder. And then Ezio, like, swung up with all his might. Sliced off half the captain's head as the captain's sword comes swinging down right past my head, shaking my head. It was more than that. Yeah, uh, it, it was brain. It, it, it was, was brain matter coming it, out. It, he, you both opened up each other's skull cap. Yeah. You could see yeah. Ezio's brain. I just want to see yeah. what's inside of your mind, man. So then Ezio was down again for 28 months. This is, at this point, mind you, this is, in the game time, four days after he was cleared to go back to duty <laughs> as a knight. <laughs> he was so he leaves the hospital, he, he leaves the <laughs> medical care of the city, only to be brought back with half his skull missing <laughs> four days later. <laughs> no, I went to the uh, other location, like the, uh, oh, yeah, the you retirement location. You got taken to the retirement city. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I got to take Florida. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucker went to Florida. He went. As a reminder to the audience, you know, taking off, opening a skull cap, I mean, that's pretty impressive. The fight's over, right? Like, we're done. One of these fuckers is undead. I was going to ask you if you need more sake. I don't think you need any. <laughs> He's had just enough. You're pretty cool. The majority of the threat of the undead was taken care of. Take yeah. care of. But there was still the altar of Kismak in the center of where they were camping. There was that, we did gloss over one You're point. Fine. Yes, what is we it? We actually discussed uh, the enemy's plans, and this is where the Will of the Deep was brought up to. Yes. It was before this, because we had a meeting with the Baron. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought that happened afterwards. No, no, no that did happen before. It was before, yeah, so, so we... 
had kind of sussed out what the enemy might attempt to do, which is what led to Aminius' dispersal of troops. Yes. Um. <laughs> oh, safe. Oh. Holy shit. <laughs> the two surviving soldiers oh, take Ezio back. Well, the party stays in the Kismak Forest. Now, the Kismak Forest is named after an uh, ancient druid. Druid person. Druid person. Druid of awesome. Whoa. Uh, mm. Yes. It was the other Kismak, the second one. We don't even know about that. Oh, Kismak that's yet. right. It was named after the Kismak. Elf. Oh, it was. That's right. Yes. Yes, that's right. The forest is named after this Kismak the second, which is a mortal hero from Lands of Esca. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. This is water, by the way. We just water. filled this hockey bottle with water. Absolutely. It's fine. We reuse here. <laughs> Recycle, I mean, we do, but like, assholes. No. Um, yeah, so we have a conversation. I remember having an angry conversation at the altar. Mm hmm. Well, and, oh, what oh, happened with did. the altar before the conversation? That's right. No, so like this fucker goes down. <laughs> Fucking fuckface McGee is like probably gonna go on a murder spree, even though half his skull is missing. Yep. Uh, Amenius is the only one that can do fuck all anything because no one else is in the right range band. No one <laughs> has a clear path. Yeah, no one trusted lightning bolts. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I can't imagine why that happened. So. I mean, he's basically has to hold until he gets saved. This is uh, dangerous at best. The long and the short of it is Aminius runs up to the altar, attempting to diffuse the magic in the altar or control or otherwise access or make use of because fuck, 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 shit, fuck. <laughs> There's a conversation about whether or not I should use Ezio Grey Matter. In my magic faith? There was. Uh, whether or not that be ethical or, or good player to player relationship. <laughs> Let me just borrow this chart. I mean, if anything, it's really just meringue. Um. You're fine. Ew. The. Oh. Uh, and then Amenius enters a contest of whales with the altar. Which was terrifying because the altar has a will? <laughs> Ah! <laughs> no! Hey, you were fine. I was fine in the end. I just, like, reached out a time while trying to slap Wait, me wait, which one of us fell down the hole? I think that was me. Yeah, because yeah. the altar tried to slap me, and then I jumped out of the way, and then y'all showed up and took care of Captain Fuckface. Yep. And then I fell down the hole. To oh. find out that the, the that forest fucking, you no. were in was all on top of a giant citadel's roof, Elven Citadel. An Elven Citadel, which Amenius fell in. No! Me! Um, and you found something interesting down there. I have no clue what it was. They found the remains. I remember. They found the remains of a druid. They found a hole in two sheets. They found a hole in two sheets. They found a hole in two holes. She with two holes. Yes. So. Down there, they run into the ghost of a druid named Kismak, uh, who they later find out is the Kismak that the hero was named after. We found Kismak the first, whom we wrongfully assume is Kismak the third. Yes. <laughs> uh, his body is there and preserved through druidic magic, but is dead, and his ghost is there. Um, also because druidic magic. Uh, there's some talking with the ghost, and the party decides to, or Kismak does offer, uh, to <laughs> let his bones be used in the fight against the undead, as his body, because of the way it was, was treated upon his death, does count, uh, his bones can be harvested to count as holy artifacts. Um, no, the party did not get the bones because the exorcist pyre happened. Miracle! Whoops! Yep. I didn't know that was gonna happen. Exorcist pyre decided, you know what? Let's bring this fuck back to life. 
Not raise him from the dead. Literally resurrect this guy. Hey, he's on my friend list now, so we've got just fuck we off. Have part A and Part B. Let's <laughs> take tab A, insert into slot B. <laughs> See what happens. Isn't that basically that, that's been our plan the entire time? Yes. Yes. And yes. besides, later on they understand what happens when you insert slot A into slot B. <laughs> This will not be the party's first resurrection. No! <laughs> won't be the last no. either, I'm sure. No! <laughs> so the exorcist Pyre opens up his faith. <laughs> the mirrored god comes through. Don't fuck with that. Resurrects thing. Kismak. <sighs> and then says bye. Alright, I'm done here. <laughs> My job's done. Thanks. I have a picture he was great. of this horrible faceless thing that I will inevitably post. I still have the picture of it. Oh, oh good, good. It's so four shitty mirrors. The party, mirrors. the party is now uh, plus one ancient druid, uh, who has mystical rights to the Kismak Forest as the ruler of of the Kismak Forest as a kingdom. Which happens to lie in the modern borders of the Eskin Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. this is the part where we realize, oh, this is Kismak the First. Oops. Also, there is a Kismak the First. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and he stole it. Who we thought now. was Kismak the Second was actually Kismak the Third. Shit. Oops. Um, uh, Kismak know, with. Undead and a tainted altar has his work cut out for him. So he does not travel with the party as they go to their next destination, which is Fur. Uh, one day to get to Fur, uh, the closest um, town, and then two days to get to the city of Tok Tok. Um, mm -hmm. Ooh, this mm -hmm. Did I convince him? Or did he appoint me? He appointed you. Okay. Because you, mm -hmm. before leaving, the uh, the party talked to him about, well, you need to talk with the current kingdom and the current ruling party. Like, it, it, You can't just declare sovereignty from within another nation. That's not how this works. Oh, That's God. not how any of this works. Oh, God, no. I know what happens later. And so Kismak went, Oops. handle my light work. You're now the speaker of Kismak. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> because definitely, when have you ever spoken for anybody? All the time. All the time. <laughs> Shut up, Tom. I don't write my own letters um, anymore. <laughs> at, at, fur, at Fur, you did Everyone take the time to send... You did take the time in Fur to send runners with orders repositioning a battalion to defend the Well of the Deep, which is in the north of the kingdom, in its desert. Uh, the Well of the Deep is a oasis in the middle of the desert, which has no known bottom. No known what? Bottom. 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 Yeah. bottom. Like, it just keep, it's filled with water, and it just keeps yeah. going down. Yeah, I thought you said bottom. Uh, yeah, the, uh, what we heard from, like, Baron about uh, this was that the elves say that the deep within lies a tower that was built by the first elves, where magic was first discovered. And also beget their grief, their social power, and uh, the dwarves helped to sink it. Was another thing to get. Yeah. Uh, you also sent a letter ahead of you to Talk Talk to the Countess Florence to tell of your coming arrival. Uh, let's see. So, Countess of the Green Rose Florence, a 64-year-old matriarch of the Hunter's Lodge uh, and her daughter, the Viscount Tulip Florence. You guys got there and, and uh, met them? <laughs> yeah, who, who wants to recount that? No. I wasn't there yet. So we were told that the mother was yeah. ill. That she was right. she was playing as if okay, so her first encounter with the mother she was absent-minded, kind of like lost her mind. Uh, so yeah, we were speaking with the daughter, the and the daughter was very asshole -y. Yeah, bitchy. Let's go with bitchy. We can go with bitchy. Bitchy. And then, as soon as the daughter leaves, the 
mother walks up, sits down, and proceeds to engage in conversation like a normal, like a person without any kind of uh, hindrance. Uh, hindrance. Yeah. My uh, God, it was like it was all just an act. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> yeah. She informs us that she suspects that her daughter is plotting against her. Yep. Dun dun dun! <laughs> oh no! Um, in case nobody saw that twist coming. No. M. Night Shyamalan and Ding Dong didn't. So the Hunter's Lodge <laughs> is has been run by the Florence family for for almost the entirety of the Eskin Kingdom. Yes. Um, Presumably this will explain to the audience why the fuck we, the PCs, care about this at all. Right. And so what the daughter was being bitchy about was, no, I don't care who it is, they don't get sovereignty in my in my forest. Because the Florence family is in charge of the Kismak Forest, and all of the Hunter's Lodge is there, which is where any kind of form of hunting or arranging is trained, civilian or military. Yes. Um, Sorry for doing that out of order. Yeah. That's why we went here first. Still bitchy. Right. Uh, the, the mother was all for it uh, and and thought it was actually appropriate for the Florence family to give Kiss Max sovereignty of the forest because of a secret. Oh, this is where I give up my hat and get stained. Yeah. Oh my god, your hat's... There's a stain on it. Oh my god! Do you remember what the secret was? Get over yourself. Uh, the Florence family are the heirs of Kismak the Second, the hero that was named after the Elves. After the original. I think. Were they the heirs of a Kismak? Maybe it isn't the second. Uh, they'd be the Aptop people, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which were barbarous. The Florence oh, changed that's right. their name that's right, from that's right. Ectop to Florence. That's right, okay. And the Ectop tribe was the one that killed the druids and took the forest. That's right. Um, the Ectox uh, hated druidic magics and saw them as evil perver- perversions of nature. For those of you wondering, by the way, druidic magic that we keep referring to is now back, but has been completely absent before this. Yes. Um, Sometimes. It's still gaining power. So from before the kingdom... Okay. Your face. So, from before the kingdom was established, yeah. the Ektok tribe took over the Pismak Forest, killed all of the druids, and druidic magic has not been seen since. But now, all of a sudden, it's rife and flow. Uh, you also meet... Like Stephen. <laughs> uh, you also meet Amelia. Yes. One of the house... Amalia. One, Amalia. 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 God, yeah. Amalia being... Uh, Initially seen as one of the uh, servants of the household who takes you to the guest, uh, the guest house for your stay, uh, and then proceeds to have a conversation with Amenius, which strikes the party as odd in the way that they speak to each other. For those of you who were holding on to that question from a while ago, you're getting the answer shortly in um, the future. <laughs> when does the right. come back? Uh, Coming in shortly. Shortly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, Amalia, uh, one, being faithful to the kingdom, and two, having respect for the prince, Grey Tarant, uh, and also, one, having control over the guest house and knows it is a safe place for them to talk, reveals to the prince, and thus the party, that uh, she is a courtier and spy in service to the queen directly. They don't ask a specific question <laughs> at this point. At this point, yet. Um, so yeah, that was that was a fun one. You guys met quite a few uh, players in the kingdom. Um, then suddenly politics. Suddenly <laughs> politics. <laughs> So during, city, suddenly politics. So, so uh, during your stay in Talk Talk, uh, dealing um, with the Viscountess Rose Florence, uh, who has been 
manipulating her mother, uh, attempting to poison her mother. Rose's uh, count is Tulip, is the Viscount. Viscount is... Yeah, uh, Viscount. Yes. You guys find out that the Viscountess Tulip has been attempting to poison her mother, which would result in her mother acting deranged. The mother still had enough support that she, and enough servants in her direct employ and, and, and faithful loyal. to her, loyal, that they were intercepting the poison and the mother was pretending like she was receiving it and thus pretending like she was evil. Mm -hmm. um, the exorcist Pyre finds out something okay. very unique about the Viscountess Tulip Florence. Do you remember what you discovered? Uh, that she's a possessed bitch. Yes. Yep, that's what I gave them my hat. God, for. you're so bitchy. What is wrong? Oh my god, you're possessed. Has anyone mentioned Bodoc and yet? To the... it's nah. Fine. Wow. No, no, that's fine. Nice. No, it's nice. Fine. Good job with that spoiler. Good thing we can... No, I mean, like... That, that was, like, a thing. To it, it, it was, was a, thing. a thing. Oh, it totally was a thing it that we totally glossed over. Like, everybody but he no could see it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but but Bodoc was also not relevant to any of the story uh, up until now. Actually... Well, uh, there... He did show up. This is why I made a grumble grumble about being a party favor. Oh, yeah. yeah because yeah, asshole yeah. with the tattoos is like, lol, you can totally do this thing, and we're gonna get into a social battle, and lol, you lose. Let's see. Oh, my God, fuck. And, yeah, Bodok actually appears in front of yes. everyone. Yes. That, and then they all... That happened their... when they were meeting with the Baron. Right. Asshole. This is why. This oh. is why Pyre doesn't have a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> the one yes. Friend. That's what he called the meeting about. Yeah. yeah. And because afterwards... And after that, he said something. A meaning is... Kind of corrected him, but incorrecting him would have. It wasn't the incorrecting would have caused him to lose face. It was incorrecting him would have revealed that fire was may or may possibly be heretical. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, you know, and that his belief was erroneous, and so <laughs> then he shot Dominius down, and Dominius is like, "That's fine, actually." <laughs> this is probably so. The, best. the Baron revealing Bodoc who has been hitching a ride in the Exorcist uh, Pyre for quite some time. A few years. A few years. Um, has been revealed as the Exorcist Guardian Spirit, which is not true. It is a possessing demon. Yep, it's actually going to be really funny later on in this story. <laughs> well, um, yeah, real shortly. Real, so, actually, yeah, real shortly. Ooh, special chapter. I always think of the Babadook. It's the only <laughs> you know, you're not. It's time. because it was because during the game we kept going badu do do. Oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so if you're on Obsidian Portal, I think his mortal form is on there. Is he? Uh, what with the spiky hair with the like. I can't. Maybe. Maybe. No. I don't remember ever no. seeing that. Are you serious? No. Yeah. No, you saw it like... because we made a meme out of it. No, and Bodoc it, approves. It, it says Bodoc approves. Yeah, well, Bodoc's kind of a dick lord, but we love him anyway. <laughs> I, I have it saved. I'll send it to you. Um, but no, uh, the Viscountess is a possessed asshole. Right. Yep. Like, uh, just literally, if you, if you went like that through her asshole, it's... Th this like is that. the part This is the part where Sir Oscar Stellman is introduced to the party. And I believe it was the Oscar's perception that first initially discovered an imp spying on the group. Oh, I think so. Oh yeah, and I got lightning bolted. Yep. yep. Oh yeah, that's... <laughs> there, were, there were two failed attempts that. to bind it through faith, and then the Master Sorcerer hit it with a spark spell and incapacitated it. They, uh, then you bound it into a prison circle and interrogated it. Okay, uh, this is where... Amenius returns uh, right as a bargain is being struck with the imp, uh, and the the imp tells the, you all about the assassin da uh, daemon named Garat the Vile, who has been summoned by the Viscountess with the target of the Exorcist Pyre. Yeah. Oh, that was the fan turning off on the timer. Uh, do, do I'm I'm timer? Uh, no. We'll turn it back on. You get nothing. You know um, what? I got a lot of something. We'll find out here in a few short minutes, won't we? <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, high five! Alright. I'm sorry, high five. So, so no, that was good. we concoct a plan. <laughs> this one goes significantly. That's well, like, this one goes better than the last one. It goes like It actually goes through yeah. with parts of the plan that we right. planned with the right. plan. There were unfortunate like side effects that then had us having to adapt the plan in, in media res because... It's fine. Shit didn't... It's it was fine. bad. It's fine. Yeah. And Oscar totally went, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> the whole time. The whole time. Uh, the whole time. Part of it was answer to Oscar because you were allowed to get information from the letter that Aminius was writing, mm -hmm. and sent uh, a letter from the prince to the court of the queen, uh, calling a court hearing in Talk Talk for something that is a deciding factor for the war. These are just the bullet point notes I wrote down from what I was told was in the letter. Uh, details of what has been uh, learned of the Necromancer and Talk Talk, uh, the returning of the Ek Talk, uh, via Tulip Florence, trying to uh, take control and return to the Ektok ways. Kismak's return, Kismak the first, the possession of the Viscountess uh, Tulip, um, and then what happened at court. So let's go over what happened at court. I don't remember what actually happened, I just remember the plan. I died. I remember the plan happened. Yeah. yeah. So, I died a lot. Oscar was being like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm protecting the prince. While we were doing that, uh, I was talking with the court sorcerer. You and were? Determined that he was on the fence, which wasn't making me happy. Yep. He was on the fence whether he was going to go with the Viscountess or the Countess. Um, but the group went to that night's evening court with the plan to not stop the assassin. Yeah. yeah, the plan was, yeah. we'll yeah. force the assassination in a public sphere, reveal the assassin to be a demon, pin the assassination on the appropriate parties by methods, methods. and then resurrect fire. Bodoc, <laughs> the resident writer <laughs> of Pyre, <laughs> 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 Uh, told them that he could resurrect Pyre so long as you did not become a sanctified dead in the few minutes that needed to happen between your death, revealing the demon, pinning it on the Viscountess, who is actually responsible, and then during that distraction, Amenius was to remove the body of Pyre so Bada could resurrect Pyre. So, uh, yeah. fun facts about that. Do you remember in the introduction, if anybody was, you know, actually paying attention, that Pyre is technically a saint? <laughs> this is why. <laughs> Ta-da! So, technically. So, so, let's go. I'm dead. I the died. Assassin, so, Pyre is killed. Pyre is killed. Pyre is assassinated by the assassin. I don't remember how we forced the demon to materialize. But it I remember... Was Either your or Oscar's faith. Okay, I think it was Oscar's faith. I think it was Oscar's faith. Yeah, Oscar's faith. I know forced I the demon to materialize. Albrecht pinned it on the Viscountess. Huh. Or one of you two. No, right? it was Pyre's ghost. That's right, Pyre's ghost. No, Pyre's all I did was point a finger and yes. say guilty. Yes. <laughs> Pyre's nope. ghost. Sometimes a finger pins it on the Viscountess. So far, so good. Problem, there's still an assassin demon. <laughs> well, okay, there's an assassin demon, what? and Pyre got a little pissed. He got a little sassy under the priest golfer. Yeah, well, I'm so... A I'm a little uh, angry right now. It was... It really was one of those moments where, you know, in the plan as written, the assassin demon has done his job, so it just goes away, right? Well... well huh. It's not right. technically. Do we... Acted on the assumption that she had bound it for a service as opposed to bound it in service? Because she never pay difference. that price. That's too extreme. There's a difference. Well, <laughs> she she paid the price. She paid that price. So there's still an assassin demon. Difference. So Pyre gets a little angry about the fact that she's going to have to be dead for a little bit longer. And then performs a miracle to banish the demon. 
Well, what it was was the Viscountess ran into a side room to summon the demon again. To summon help. A no, summon a different demon to help. Yeah. yeah. And oh, she she tried to summon the imp that we still had in the prison circle. Yes. Yeah. And so she she was in a circle and trying to summon it and was Courtier literally a fight faith battle between her and I think it was you or me. I think it was both of us. It, it was yeah. both of you. And yeah. we were like, <laughs> and, and she was about to That's win, and then Pyre slot. came in and went, no, fuck off, no. Yeah. Pyre, Pyre did the equivalent of an archangel showing up and going, you are smoked. <laughs> it's kind Thanks of like when your dog piddles on the carpet and you smack it with a rolled up newspaper. No. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. More Meanwhile, Oscar and Anna are trying to like, smoke. stop her, and she's like, swat. What? what? Stop it! <laughs> Empire Stop went it. Yeah, you sanctification. She. So in the, it's a robe, not a dress. In yeah. the act of, ch of channeling divinity through his ghost. That was another great miracle, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. 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 Pyre sanctified himself as a as a dead. So is now a sanctified dead, and Bodok can no longer resurrect Pyre. But yeah. what now, was the solution? Oh, hold on. <laughs> okay. Now, the plan still proceeds at pace. Yes, we do. We're because in this together, man. We're in this together. The plan still proceeds at pace. Um, being unable to summon the creature. So, we bought time because she wasn't able to summon the imp because the imp thing in prison circle. Fine. Great. Awesome. Pyre smites her, sanctifies his corpse, and then <laughs> the other group steps in. The, the court sorcerer, Albrecht, the prince of the spell sword. They step in and basically pronounce judgment instantaneously, like you can when you have that much status. Yeah. But that they kicked him. Fuck you, you're wrong. Aminius takes the distraction and pulls Pyre out, talks to Bodok. It's like, alright, Bodok, go for it. And Bodok is like, well. <laughs> There's a small problem. I mean, he's like, fuck. Yes, but I was in the room now you were. with her. Oh, yeah. And then you were moving the body aside because all the distraction was over at me yeah. against. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's the factor of what do you do? And then that happened, and you're like, wait, why can't you do this now? What yeah. what do you do? You so, have to desecrate this corpse. How do you unsanctify a corpse? You desecrate it. How do you desecrate a corpse without causing lasting harm? Butthole yeah. sex. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> Necrophilia. Behind uh, what was it? Was it bush? It was, it was, it was, it was in a bush. It was in a bush. Underneath the window. Pyre's ghost literally <laughs> had to look away as his corpse was being fornicated with because it means this is just so giving that way. Sometimes you just gotta get fucked back to life. That's, oh my god, that's oh, a I think it's <laughs> better. I, I want you all to realize that the tally of mortal sins is squarely two on a mania. Zero on anybody else. <laughs> Human sacrifice. <laughs> Desecration of a corpse. And necrophilia. Yeah. We're at like two and a half. We're two and a half. Two and a half. It's kind of consensual. I mean, I did ask. Like, so I gotta fuck your body. Is that. Are, are you dead or is that cool? <laughs> Alright, we're just do it. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Just do it. I'm actually moving. So, Wait, oh god. <laughs> here's, here's the fun part is no one saw Amenius take Pyre's body. Yeah. They think it just disappeared when the ghost <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> oh yeah. It did! Pyre is already a famous exorcist in the land. Especially with Baron oh, yeah. Von Fuckfaces. I'm sorry, everyone is just fuckface. Yes. <laughs> Baron Von Assholes. Oh, you're like a neat parlor trick. Let's do this <laughs> thing. Upon death, Asshole. appeared as a ghost oh. and performed a miracle. As a ghost. As a ghost. Right. And then the Ghost and the body disappeared. Yeah. Word spreads. That exorcist is now a saint. Yeah. Yeah. And no one knows that the Saint Pyre is now actually alive in a sense again. But I'm not really alive. Not really am alive. I? So Bodok at this point reveals something about himself. <laughs> he is created from necromantic power. Magic. Well, I'm say what? By <laughs> Huh? By Cassandra Highwater himself. Yes. Yeah. By yeah. the yeah. very necromancer you guys are chasing. It was a failed experiment. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but he's mild failed experiments. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's and my he was missed in the taking out. No, he was made by no. Chris Ander in Chris Ander's early, early necromantic yeah. dabblings yeah. before he disappeared. And then further abandoned. And then further abandoned. Yeah, he was like bound to an area. And yeah, he was bound to an area and then he was bound into my body. Yep. yep. Pay attention. No, but he wasn't bound into you by Chris Ander. No. No. That was your that was your that own. Was, that was your own. <laughs> yeah, that was your own. Oh. <laughs> Bodoc <laughs> resurrects the Yelda now Man. Saint Pyre. Yep. <laughs> As um, an undead creature of sorts. It's a fucking va it's a vampire. It's a vampire. Which I find is really funny because <laughs> it's honey at the same time. First of the blood. It's a faith sucker. No, va vampires have not been a thing as of yet in, in this reality. Or the um, next one. Or the <laughs> next one. Or the other one that they go to next. We'll get there. Don't worry about it. Just take Stop that. Put it to the side for now. It's fine. Uh, I literally know. have all eternity. I have no ahead or behind anymore. <laughs> um, well, Abenius uh, and Bodok work to get Pyre resurrected. Yeah, fucks my corpse. Oh. Yeah. Just say it. Fuck. <laughs> Necrophilia Heart. happened. Horrible interrogation attempt that is next. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God. <laughs> I can't exactly remember how that started, but I think we were alerted that they had captured some strange being that we hadn't seen before. Oh my god, this one. It hurts. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. no, that, that was it after hurts. this stuff. It well, yeah, it's after this, but this is the next... Just the... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so give the, it the best solution to that, by the way, is that like we, we convict the Viscountess. Plus ten followers of her. Plus ten of her followers. Um, expunge the... the... Demons. Well, no, what is the word? Uh, conspiracy. Um, and restore the throne rightfully and safety to uh, Lady Florence. Well, high speaker of the forest. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah. Oh, I was already there. Oh. Oh, no, that's right! Yeah, you get promoted to Because it. Lady Florence and, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Lady Florence and Kismak have that meeting where she's like, you know what? You're right. I acknowledge that this is your forest. I'm still beholden to my queen, and she has to acknowledge it, but I'm on your side. He said, and then Kismak looks at me and says, you've done well. Have a promotion. You're officially my speaker. <laughs> I mean, you are really good with your mouth as a... I am. Yeah. Just like, no. She's also... <laughs> my notes at this point also say Pyre is now a vampire. Bwah. <laughs> yeah, that... Yeah. Yeah, that happened. That pun was about two hours of game time, just so you know. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's uh, kind of funny that the mom is on my friend list, despite the fact that I really oh, fucked Oh yeah, we all got a connection to her, too. You yeah. do? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, social connection. Yep. Uh, so you guys went back to the guest house. Yep. Uh, and... Oof. There, th this is about the part where... Uh, uh, a great one and a chieftain of a clan arrives. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So so as they're as they're inside the guest house, uh, a basically a large black wolf. God, yeah. Wolf yeah. Comes up to the back dock. No. The back uh, yeah, at least. God damn it, Kyle. No, this isn't Kyle's friend. This is a mean. No, this is a god damn it, Kyle. Oh yeah, he wants, say, he wants your ass. Yeah. Really hard. Well, like he, we went there and then we go elsewhere. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, okay, this is a meanius. At this point, who anybody. does not want his ass, and whose ass does he not want, apparently? <laughs> I can't Wolves fuck everyone in the kingdom. No, to be orcs. It's not possible. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not dressed to robe. I don't have what I mean. If it's Eventually. Forever. It's yeah, a robe! Yeah. So... <clears throat> it was the last of this one. Group 2. Yep, it's it was Uthir. Well, Uthir, yep. cursed blood. Yep. Of oh, yeah. the slaughtered tribe, the only living orc of his tribe. Mm -hmm. Not the only living orc, just of his tribe. Uh, you guys also 
uh, had uh, Targod uh, Karak, yep. who was a great one and chieftain of a clan, whom well, Alric. Wasn't, wasn't just me, he was there too. Yeah. That was the one that was uh, torturing him. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Prince and Albrecht. Yeah, how's that go? Uh, really well, actually. <laughs> Upon discovering this uh, this orc, uh, well, the torture part went well. You guys managed to knock him out. You have Ephesius uh, clear out the cellar, uh, the wine cellar, and you convert it into a makeshift torture chamber, where you have for for the audience. No one has torture on their character sheet. We're all fairly no. decent human beings. I was starting to open it because of this. Yeah. yeah. Hey. <laughs> Uh, Fairly decent. Everyone has Fairly a playroom. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. <laughs> yeah. Your parents totally have one. <laughs> have fun, guys. It's just not always in your house. I'm just gonna leave that there. It's just yeah. Ooh. We uh, I did some okay. examination. So like he was a humanoid with green skin, muscle with tusks. They have black blood, cold black blood. Cold black blood. Uh, this is the first time. Orcs have been seen in the kingdom. Ever. Yeah. Full stop. Full stop. Ever. This is the first time orcs have been seen in this area of the world since well before the kingdom. Uh, is the tribes had done something that kept the orcs out. Orcs were a thing of myths and legends. Like the elves probably talked about them, but like... Yeah. The, the only reason people actually gave credence that orcs might actually exist is because the elves would speak about encounters with the orcs. And elves were real. They came. They visited. They did trade. So... Do trade. Still do trade. Yeah. Um, so Albrecht collects components yeah. for future use and Alchemy. Alchemy and he never did get around to uh, ejaculating in the forest. Uh, I still have the materials. I have to gather the materials. So. As in your own time. Yeah. <laughs> what? He's got to make the homunculus. Yeah, that is how you do it. It's. It's just you got. You got to. He's got to. Got to provide matter and DNA. <laughs> the egg. It's his baby. <laughs> Okay, just as a small side note, so fun fact, and you'll see this if we actually upload the first season, if that's possible, or if you tune in this. for anything, so but it's literally a timing factor. Every time I drink a thing, oh, yeah. alcohol, water, juice, does not matter, okay. one of these <laughs> One of these gorgeous fucks had <laughs> just to say a thing that's funny. However, I still win because, Kyle, what happened? <laughs> Wasn't it uh, Mike's hard all over your uh, your laptop? Yep. No, I want to say it was root beer. Was it root beer? Yeah, no, it was, it was not your dad's root beer. Yeah. Not, not your father's root beer. Yeah. So I have a tally. A single tally. Was it through your nose? No, it was actually through his nose. No, it was all like, over his laptop. Yeah. All over. Yeah, I think that was the session too, wasn't it? Yes, it, it was. It was around here, yeah. And it was actually, that one was an accident, whereas these assholes time it. We don't. We, we don't. don't. Bullshit. So, yeah. so you guys dealt with the first orc that showed up. The second orc shows up being Uther, Cursed Blood of the Slaughtered Tribe, um, who convinces you guys not to immediately go into physical combat with it. I didn't think much convincing. I saw the end of that interrogation and was disappointed. Yeah, the orc the broke least. free and killed himself. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, you lost a lot of rolls, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've been opening it. It hasn't been opened yet. Yes. It's, it's okay. So, I mean, just came in I'll for the suicide better. and was like, what was that? Oh, that was an interrogation. Wow, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Note to self. You, perhaps safety words are them. necessary. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. Yeah, uh, so then Uther shows up. Uther? Yeah, Uther Uther's. said some interesting stuff. He, uh, let's see. You find out that he is effectively a shaman, mm -hmm. an orc mystic, uh, who uses the magic of the orcs. Yeah, he's from uh, across the waste to the north. 
and that he was tracking the guy that ended up killing himself, I want to say. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. He was tracking him. Because they're starting to come down. Um, right. They were coming down because they're getting pressured from a crystal tower, Necropolis, uh, where Highwater was had built a Necropolis, yeah. Yep. Yep, this is the part where we like, find out. Go invade this place. Take back your homeland. Not technically. I mean, yes, but no. So, we find out from the and piece together a bunch of information that the group has collected to date. Mm -hmm. Regarding Highwater's history. Um, so, Highwater practices necromancy in Exton for a time, um, is on the verge of being discovered, is being investigated, fakes his own death and disappearance. I mean, faking your disappearance is really faking it because you disappear in the end anyway. As we know. As we know. He travels to the Elven Lands, learns more about their mysticism before the news catches up with him. And then he just keeps going. Traveling throughout the land, practicing and refining his necromancy, raising up armies of God knows who the fuck what else. And learning more about necromancy by trying to find old scripts. Yes. Um, eventually constructing a necropolis of undead, a floating necropolis of undead, in order to come back and reclaim the lands of Exton. He finds out other secrets that motivate him. We don't know those yet. Uh, nothing. This is this is also the part where you find out that the tribes, before coming together to become the kingdom of Exton, um, erected uh, totemic uh, to totemic, totemic oh. edifices oh. around yeah. what is now the border of Exton, creating a magical barrier preventing orcs from passing. Mm -hmm. um, that thus being why it's been thousands and thousands and thousands of years since orcs have last been seen in the area. Um, that barrier is starting to to be weakened through machinations of high water, um, and he's been able to slip in one or two orcs here and there. Uh, this is the first orc that was really caught. And then Uther is not working for high water, is working against high water. Mm -hmm. um, basically sees Highwater as manipulating orcs for his own means, and is basically, he, he thinks Highwater is going to sacrifice the orcs to get his own means and basically screw over orc kind. Correct. So, so. He's, he's looking to help prevent the orcs from being able to get into Exton, which would then prevent them from being the sacrifice Highwater is seeking. Correct. Um, he's brought himself into the lands of Exton because the original totemic powers were made out of a pact with shamanic orcs and druids. And the warding needed to cre be created requires orc blood. That's why he's here. Um, what was it? One one of the totems had managed to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, so the barrier was still up, but in one spot it was severely weakened, and with a great deal of effort, could be breached. breached could be gotten through. Yeah. Um, and then a great deal of effort more, another could get through. Uh, not ideal, but it was enough to start getting a trickle of orcs in for high water's needs. Correct. Um, yes, and that's Uther's the one who informs us that there are effectively, not really, but in all technicality, two factions. Uther and the rest of our kind. Uther also revealed some parts of the history of, uh, of the Well of the Deep. Um, that originally there was a floating crystal tower, uh, which Highwater based his floating necropolis on. was an, an elven floating citadel. Um in which was the centerpiece of elven magical research and, and academics. Um, it was also discovered that there was the first, uh, that was the location where the first elf 
fell and became the first orc. Um, Bonus scene <laughs> that you don't get to see. Yep. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. We did play that scenario. Woof, woof. Yep. And that is where Greg uh, played the breast, the best the princess. Breast. The, the breast, breast princess. The breast princess. <laughs> breast princess. <laughs> yeah, that too. Just <laughs> princess. But what happened when you found wolves? You, you needed to go and talk Not to just them. regular wolves. I tried to talk to an undead wolf. <laughs> yeah. Did it didn't go well. Did that wolf? Yes. Yeah. I'm did. like, no, you're stupid. Stop it. <laughs> And then you were like, Kill to be child. fair, she can talk to wolves, just not undead ones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are wolves that can totally talk. Your princess was adorable. No. It's okay, because my lover was kind of an asshole. I love you, Cal. Hi, buddy. <laughs> hey, friend. Oh, man. So you guys learned quite a bit about, about the prehistory. Uh, the fall of the elf to become the first orc happened well before the first human ever existed. Well before. Well before. Um, um, you guys then traveled back to Fang's Keep and stayed at the prince's estate there. Uh, you requisitioned uh, maps. Uh, you requisitioned a map of the wastes. Uh, the ancient Kismarak. Kismarak which is the Elven pronunciation, and a few other maps. Um, you also had a uh, meeting mm -hmm. um, the puppet queen. with the puppet queen. Uh, you had a meeting face-to-face -face with the queen, not there, um, just to find out that the queen has various hidden places where effectively a wooden effigy is is carved and using uh, magics held secret to the crown uh, the queen can project into that wooden facade make it look just like her and effectively function as if she was there any assassination attempts just hit wood <laughs> um, oh. Uh, where you, uh, with, with knowledge from the orc shaman Uther, uh, you discuss, uh, the seven totems that basically create the barrier, um, and the fact that it, uh, needs the antecedent, uh, called black blood, which is only attainable from orcs. Um, you which also, uh, Albrecht also did a lot of the, basically, mystical mathematics. Yep. To figure out what would be needed to, to be able to do this, and it turned out to be ridiculous, which is why it was multiple tribes working together to create this, and not just simply one source work. Um, we also ended up learning that we didn't have to go to every single location. Yeah, the bay of things. There was a and we just had to go to the linchpin that actually held all the spells. Right. And if, you went, went, and if you went to the linchpin and reactivated it with the original ritual, it would re-empower all seven of the spires of the totems and reinforce it. Um, it is also at that point uh, that the party actually starts to learn a little bit more about Amenius. Especially when it's revealed that uh, there is a prisoner by the name of Eric. Uh oh. Oh, Eric. So, y'all remember those questions you were keeping tucked under your bonnet for a rainy day? More of them? No, that's just, just the ones that they already have. Um, in Talk Talk, Dominus refers to Amalia as his sister. Clearly not physically related. Uh, but more of an emotional and spiritual connection. He explains that they were both orphans, and they both attended the same orphanage. So the party smiles and nods out, like, oh, okay. Uh, um... That's crazy. Yeah... So... We go to this city. Okay, so a, a short aside, by the way, Uther, like, 
before anyone can kill Uther or question why he's there, Amenius basically decrees, as the speaker of Kismak, this is the guest of Kismak. Thus elevating Uther to the position of a diplomatic guest of sorts. Under a nation of questionable sovereignty. It's by no means safe, but it's not going to get him murdered. Or it's at least going to give any guard or uh, army person or military personnel who gets uppity pause as they try to figure out what exactly is the penalty if I kill him? Yeah. <laughs> well, while you're thinking about that... <laughs> oh! Of, of course, Amenius also does not share the aspect that Uther needs a human sacrifice for his portion of the ritual. Ayo! <laughs> Which is why Eric the prisoner is important. Because Eric the prisoner is already sentenced to death, and so is then given up to be Uther's sacrifice. So. so sentenced to death for two murders. Yeah. So. Oh, God, that one. Conversation. Yeah. 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 Fucking conversation. So. The sky we arrive in the capital city. We have to step back a few steps because they need the background. We arrive in the capital city. The prince expresses that he needs an audience with the queen. And Amenius says, all right. And then the, the Amenius writes a letter expressing that he needs an audience with the queen and delivers it via a somewhat clandestine network. Of note, Amenius doesn't use the prince's seal when he delivers this letter. Which I believe you noticed because you watched him write the letter. Yeah, I mean, this is just like... Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you gonna announce me? <laughs> uh, oh my god, that's literally a motto. It's fine. It's In it's quotation fine. mark. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, Hashtag it's fine. Yeah, so... Then we get an audience with the queen! Almost immediately. Uh, almost like what? <laughs> Under Amenius' name. <laughs> it's fine. The response comes back, Amenius and guests. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. For those who are not well versed in medieval etiquette, either the prince was just incredibly snubbed, or Amenius is not who he says he is. If you've been following the story, I'm certain you know the answer to that question by this point. Oh, shocker. Um, shocker. In the meeting with the queen, it's revealed that Amenius, that the orphanage uh, is the code name for the clandestine network of the Queen's spies. Where the Queen, the Queen's network of spies literally takes orphans and raises them and trains them to be spies. There are actual orphanages that these refer to. She's the Queen Mother. It's just not a wholesome education. <laughs> it's it's necessary though. It is a necessary education. The, the Queen's orphans are her intelligence agents. It's a type of education. Which then goes back to the answer to the original question of why the fuck, why the fuck does Renata Frower send a whore to barracks to investigate a spirit? Ding. What? What? The original excuse was, it's a menius of barracks. He's going to be your guide around barracks. Hello. I've slept with half the city. Clearly I know what I'm doing. <laughs> The party's like, okay. You it, stuck your dick in my ass. It is also <laughs> then found out that Eric is also an eye of the queen. Eric was. So, we need a sacrifice. So I asked for someone on death row. Like, hey, hey, hey fam, hey. Actually, so, hey, Oscar, take this letter to the... Oh, that's right. I can just and, throw and you at like it. get someone from death row. So I was like, I'm like, okay. The I, letter I, says, "Hey, hey, fam, I, I need someone from death row. Don't ask questions. <laughs> just give me the most, the uh, soonest one to die." Well, all sorts of stamps all over it. <laughs> can I need to see Hold on, let me go. <laughs> so I show up and I, I get the prisoners. <laughs> I learned that the prisoner's name is. So I start chatting with Eric on the way back to the estate, the prince's estate, and I go out to do. I was like, so I find out that oh, yeah, he, he was charged with two murders that he didn't even like 
he was protecting this orphanage that he was protecting like, an orphanage. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy attacked one of the orphans, and so he attacked them back and killed the two of them. And actually, no, it was the guy killed one of the orphans, and so he killed the guy that killed the orphan. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. And he was charged with both murders and sentenced to death. And yeah. so I get back and I'm like, this is my friend Eric. After he was very wanting to kill himself, himself. <laughs> he yes. So but this is my friend Eric. Oscar <laughs> brings back Eric to the estate. They sit, they have a glass of wine. Aminius comes back from whatever he was doing. I think Aminius and Tyre come back from whatever they were doing. Yeah, Aminius and Tyre would come back from whatever. That happens a lot. And it's it wasn't sex yet. I don't remember no. what I we know, were doing, though. I, there's Uther sex in there somewhere. Yeah, you did have sex with Uther. No, I, I remember that. That was in between Why these was I two there? points. You were not there at that No, point. not that one. I don't no, know. there was literally a... Wow. I think we went out We went out to do something, but it was completely frivolous. Like, it wasn't really story-related. It was just us going out to do something. Wait, was that the one where you told me I needed better clothes? Oh, yes. yes. That's right. Oh, my God. You, you were complaining. on my priest guard. You were... No, 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 no. Because it was because you were a vampire. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. And you had been fuck. complaining about yeah. the feel of the clothes. It and itched. So, Aminius was, let's go get you better clothes. So, these two went out. Shopping. Oh, first speed time too, wasn't it? What? Hmm? For first speed? Yeah. Oh yeah, the first time you fed it too. Yep. Um, Faithful vampire. Nom nom nom. So, I these two forward. went out. Shopping. Now in quotes. <laughs> uh, Who knows and then what happened we in between? Come home. And hey. Oscar's like, hey! Hi girl! Meet my friend Eric. And Amenius looks at Eric, and then promptly walks off into the wine cellar. I'm like, no, I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> Excuse me. I have to go now. I have the person you have for, that you asked for. The, the, the rest of the party the eventually shows up, and it's like, where's Amenius? He's in the wine cellar? Like, he took a look at Eric and walked away. <laughs> he took a look, went down, and from what we've been hearing, he's been cracking open caskets, and there's been a lot of clucking. Eric the prisoner. Yes, so this is the scene where Grey Tarant runs down into his wine cellar to stop Aminius from drinking all of, all of everything. All of it. It's an actual threat. And half of everybody follows. Um, yeah, and, and like, it will for, I'll forever be with me that Tarant's attempt, first attempt at deterrence is, No, I don't know what half of those are. Stop! <laughs> to which Aminius responds, Buddy, that's why you have a small yay, who is now my best friend. The way this is your small <laughs> His name is this. <laughs> We've been chatting. His name is, the, is this thing. Um, the party attempts to pry out of Aminius why he's decided to drown his sorrows. Meanwhile, the prisoner is upstairs, not in chains. Unsupervised. It's fine. Everything's fine. I don't think they pry anything out of Aminius in the wine cellar, but they do actually convince Aminius to come back up to the main floor. And have everything explained. When Aminius was but a wee lad, technically when Aminius and Amalia were but a wee lad, they were in the orphanage together. We all know what that means. Do you recall the part in the story where Eric was a uh, caretaker at an orphanage? He's a new orphan. Oh. Uh, could I handle it? The orphanage was on the third of being discovered. So, Aminius, for undisclosed reasons, it fell to Aminius to close the orphanage. Which then led to Aminius using Eric as the patsy. There is some implied consent, or at least forgiveness on Eric's part, in that scene, but that is the story. I don't think actually the whole story comes out at this point. Not yet. But, I don't know what all was told, in what step, but I do remember that, no, the whole story doesn't come out, because then Oscar names the Rat King Eric, Eric 
later, and I'm making a pass to explain why that was a terrible idea. Yeah. I do think it is insinuated that Eric was an orphan father, and that there is some bad blood between Aminius and Eric for job-related duties. There was that, and it wasn't necessarily explained that he was like the head until after the incident with the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spoilers. Yeah. Spoilers. Well, I already told the whole story. Yeah. 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 Bing. Um. So things are getting set up to redo the war. Uh, everything that's needed like, is had. Uh. So Oscar, the prince, and Uther, and Eric uh, go and take care of that. Uh, one of the last things they need to do is collect the bones of the, one of the queens. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Specifically the seventh queen? I think so. Specifically the seventh queen. Which they find out about <coughs> when the ghosts of the mortal queens throughout the entire line show up. Oh god. Oh yeah. Yep. We're like, uh, the no, that happened. That was right after Uther dispersed to go grab his materials too. Yep. So he wasn't there for that. <laughs> yeah, we decided we don't actually know what the ritual does, so let's contact the queens. Why the fuck not? Because they all know. Why not? Actually, what we decided was, let's play, let's pray for guidance. Yeah, how well did that work out? Somehow we yelled Bloody Mary three times in a mirror. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we then proceeded to blow the dice pool out of the water. Am I praying right? <laughs> Are we praying right? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> we all teamed up, too. Yeah. Like, all the faithful. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. What yep. will be, what will tie in... A little more important later too is the way the ghosts of the queens arrived was the room filled with this dark shadows that basically looked like was initially the shadows of a forest and then each sh tree shadow formed into the ghost of one of the mortal queens like is that nope the party <laughs> sounds amazing <laughs> it's like Oh, it's because Kismak is and the Menius is speaker faithful. We'll worry about this later. No. <laughs> yeah. Menius is yeah. shaking in his boots right now, too. Hi. Oh, I was the only one that caught that. Event. You were the only one that caught that Menius was terrified. When that was happening, it was like, uh... But you didn't catch why. Because yeah. you don't have the social skills to catch why. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like Menius okay. is scared of something. So clearly he didn't do it because he's scared. Minis was scared because, oh shit, they're gonna find out. That was such a baby. Yeah. Um, I feel like I've said these words before. Repeatedly and often. Yeah. One of the. Less of a one trick pony. This is the part where one of the queens said, Heaven is broken. Mm hmm. Uh, one of the queens referred to a place known as the Land of the Gods. <laughs> so sassy lady. Uh, they were just kind of. They were a little sassy. Uh, they told you exactly which queen's bones were needed. Um, because she did not want to talk. No, she talked. None of them really wanted to. Because none of them wanted the circumstances for why they were needed to be happening. Yeah. Also, I mean, look at us. <laughs> Just saying. Uh huh. Look walk, at walk, us. Walk, walk the um, <laughs> look at us. As, a, as an explanation for the people at home, by the way, uh, Aeneas is faithful to the God of Secrets. I mean, like, he's faithful to a god that he professes publicly, which is then... But then he's also heretical, and then he's also... <laughs> faithful to the god of secrets. There's, there's a giant question as to who he's actually worshipping when he prays. Which has mostly been resolved. Uh, Pyre originally started worshipping... 
Oh my god. No, I can't remember the name either. Okay. I know I have a picture of it. I know. Pyre was a uh, mean doctrination of the whole country. Yes. Right. Face. Yes. Right. We forget that. It was. Name. Yeah. Yeah. Pyre. The name of that. It was re- often referred to as the mirror god. Yes. The faith of I- uh, Idolon. Idolon. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, so Pyre was a faithful of Eidolon, which was the, the state religion in as far as we were. Um, yeah. And it actually says, later on, Pyre's beliefs change because Pyre comes to some fairly relevant pieces of information. I, you say that without a plural. Right. Pluralization happened like a domino effect. Dang oh, it. yes, because in the conversation with the queens, the queens actually reveal how the nation's religion came about. Yep. The faith came before the god. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Human faith created the god, which then backed the faith for miracles to happen. Mm-hmm. In essence, faith is self perpetuating If you Good draw it, if you draw out the diagram of how this works, it ends up forming a crude dick. Yeah. <laughs> it really does. <clears throat> and Oscar is adherent to the goddess of battles. And art. Which is not heretical. Which is not heretical, correct. Yes, that no, was one of the only original like, tribes. It was one of the original tribe uh, gods. It was uh, the tribe of Barrett. <laughs> Now, the, the thing that's also of, of note, and a little bit of a callback at this point, uh, the god of secrets that Amenius actually follows was also the tribal god of the forgotten tribe, Ektok. Is that what you Ding! Huh? The barbarians? The ones that killed the, the druids? Um, you guys also did research on who the counselors of the, uh, the 12 counselors of the College of Magic mm-hmm. under the High Water Administration. Yep. Um, uh, Try to find more links and really build a dossier on. Oh high God! Water. When did that? When did there was a meeting with High Water showed up? Yeah, yeah, that was around this time. Yeah. 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 I, I think it was like, before was this. In though. in my villa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was in your be- villa. right before the counselor. In your villa. Because uh, we were talking about some stuff, and he's like, "The world belongs to the dead." Yeah. Yes, because he said it first, and the queens confirmed it. Yes, mm-hmm. which not wrong. Yeah, that's why we asked for the queens and for guidance because high water showed up. And we it wasn't that we we acknowledged that high water was not necessarily a credible source. However, he also wasn't lying at the time. Yep, uh, it stated that. This land belongs to the dead, yep. and he was seeking to restore it to those that belonged to. Um, and, and it was insinuated that he was faithful to death, death yeah. as a personified faith, which is not something that the rest of the kingdom had any conception of. Ooh, that was a story time, time too. Yes. Oh, yeah. that was a good time. Oh. Yep. Oh, that was the story time. That was a story time. Where I told the story about Seven story Secrets. Time. Yeah. How see, how Mendes was born as the god of secrets. And yeah. that's what draw, drew the queens to us. Yeah, because... Yeah. Because they're like... I'll tell you the real story. Yeah. Uh, so... One can only get so erect. The story they are speaking about is... Uh, in this land, there was really only ever one original god. And that was death. And the lands belonged to the dead. But what happens when death is dying? But death needed that to not be spread. And so he he told Mendez, creating Mendez to be the holder of the secret. Um, death dying is effectively the penultimate secret within the religion of Mendes. Mm-hmm. Penultimate. There's another one. There's another yeah. one. There's always more. There's, there's always more. Um, and only ever one follower of Mendes would ever know this at any given time, and there were huge swaths of history 
where no follower of Mendes even knew the secret. Um, it was only ever known by a follower of Mendez when it needed to be a, the, the tension between someone knowing a secret and two people knowing a secret feeds it. it it's basically like that, that tension between how many people know a secret and then the risk of that someone secret being out. spread. Uh, that tension can be used in the faith of Mendez as, as basically miracle working. Um, and it so, serves a slightly more important porpoise. It, purpose. Porpoise. <laughs> porpoise. <Turtle. laughs> we have that much. <laughs> <The> truth. <laughs> it serves a slightly more important purpose. It's important purpose. Yeah, well, no. I mean, porpoises are also important. <laughs> yeah. Um, to the oh. greater cosmology as a whole. Because it's that tension that then acts as a dressing of sorts, shall we say. To the fuck salad. <laughs> so yeah, the, the party now knows this... Cosmology. Cosmology. Mm. And, and the... is confirmed to Pyre that Eidolon was a fictitious god that was used to channel faith of people in order to give birth to an actual god, Eidolon, to then s s spin back around and reinforce faith. In, in a yeah. giant socially engineered <clears throat> effort to give a unifying faith to 12 disparate peoples. Right. So, Eidolon... Yeah, I mean, the, the religion of Eidolon is also the... the the faith of faith. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not dressed that way. Eidolon is uh, a, effectively a deity of guidance and is the deity of guidance that helps strengthen the connection between descendants of these 12 tribes and their tribal god. So there are still the tribal gods, Mendes excluded, because that was the 13th tribe that got dispirited. Um, they, they did some shit. They did some shit. And got some shit happened. Yeah. Got disappeared in. Uh, you know, disappeared in. They the shaved. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> Get out. Bye, gotta go. Get out of your own house. God damn it, you're married to this. <laughs> Yeah. It's only gonna get worse as the years go on. I know, but I'm still laughing. I know! <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, this um, is unacceptable. But it is. Oh, God. So, uh, a part of Eidolon's power from being formed the way he was, and one of the reasons he's known as the God of Mirrors, was he would uh, hold up a mirror to the faith of these 12 tribes, these 12 different faiths. So, the goddess of art and war is actually just a reflection of those followers' faith through one of Eidolon's mirrors, portraying that deity. So Eidolon was all of the deities, but did not, that was one of the secrets. Which, God, that shit got weird, because then, like, every secret allowed Mendes to do something different, which in this case was exist separately from Eidolon. Yes. I mean... That, and then the ultimate secret allowed it to exist separately from Eidolon. Which is why a lot of, well, okay, which is why Mendes disappeared in the first place. Because then it allows Mendes to create heresy. How do we not kill each other? I don't think we have the means to. Uh, we haven't killed each other because my god is very, very good at what my god does. <laughs> <laughs> and I think yes. Pyre stopped caring. Yeah. Curious how you started learning because when you stopped caring whether or not they were trying. Wee! <laughs> right? I can summon a thing. Watch me do it. No. So, in 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 the interim, oh my God, not. the the prince, Sir Oscar, okay. Uther the shaman, and Kismak. Yeah, we pulled Kismak, Kismak out for this ship. Gets summoned for this. Walks through a tree. Yep. To get like, hi, I'm over here in the Kismet Forest. I'm gonna walk into this tree and out of this tree in King's King's Fang. Da -da -da. Hey. Da -da -da -da. Um, at which point, 
Somebody at some point mentions to Kismak about the shadowy trees, and then Kismak kind of looks confused and not okay, and, and then it gets glossed over again. <laughs> no one mentions it again. As most things seem to happen. It's like, hey, weird shadowy trees and a meteor. Hmm. Okay. And so fire. The, the <laughs> King's, King's Fang has this bay that kind of has this mountainous uh, edgings that come down and basically look like fangs when you look at it. Um, in the middle of that bay, deep under the water, is the actual real royal catacombs, uh, where the prince, Sir Oscar, Uther, and Kismet go. Uh, there are 20 hallways leading from uh, the circumference of a circular room. Um, there's really only three inches between each hallway initially, and they go straight. Uh, one hallway is the stairs uh, leading up back out of the tombs. Um, the Eidolon religion and the number of 19. 19 point star perception, which I still have never told anybody. Nope. Yep. Uh, Oscar managed to look at this, realized that the, the 20th hallway, which was this exit, was not actually part of the, the mystical architecture. And he looked at it and he realized the order of the queens, um, because it did not start from the left or the right and go around like queen one, two, three, four. No, it went queen one, two, three, four, in the form to where it made a 19 point star, or the ascension star. That was a very impressive per uh, perception. <laughs> yes. Uh, this has become a secret because you've not shared this with anybody. No. You didn't even share it with, with the prince who was there with you. You just said, it's that hallway. That one will take us to the queen's remains that we need. <laughs> to, to Greg and Prince Gon's credit, Prince Gon did actually turn to you and say, how do you know that? And then you just walked off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care that you're a prince. I'm not answering that question. <laughs> I'm bargaining that way for later. <laughs> it's fine. And the prince is like, okay. No, the prince was displeased. I made a note to talk, call you out on that later. <laughs> Never did. Nope. That's because there was other bullshit happening. There yeah. was a lot of other bullshit there that happened. There was other bullshit. So Does bullshit anybody bullshit. remember what that other bullshit was? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, uh, my gosh. ZC, yeah. ZC, the dwarven envoy, uh, the master engineer, Vic Toon Smith. The archangels. That was later, wasn't it? No, no that was in there. the tomb. It was in the tomb. That's who two were angel so, guards. God, that's right. That's, 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 that's when we first ran into that's that. That's when I talked yeah. to one of them. Oh. That yeah. was the bullshit yeah. I was talking about. Yeah, so no, no, we're talking about we're, you're thinking about other bullshit. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. they were like Something. from this point forward, there is. A they lot were just auto automatons. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. we walked waist deep into the fucking eight foot. Portion of the pool. I don't know what you're doing. They're like, oh, we're fine. Nope. Yeah. So huh. we're still watching. So yeah. you guys, you guys effectively get to the the That's catacomb right. of the queen, where you you encounter two angels. Yeah, I don't have God that. damn it. Um, you prove to the angels your purpose, and they let you through. Uh, they also gave you information. Um, you ha uh, the prince had asked some key specific information uh, because this is the first time the prince has seen an angel uh, and angel sightings are extremely rare uh, angels exist in the religion um, so to say but they are spirits and as spirits are a real thing that exorcists and sorcerers deal with um it is believed that angels are also spirits. Uh, the two angels that the prince and Sir Oscar ran into were not spirits. They were physical beings who through aura reading, you both confirmed, you no, know, these are angels, they are not spirits, they are alive, and they're physical. Um, they look like they're made of like Yep. Yeah. They looked like they, they looked and sounded like they were made of like 
gears, metal. Uh, they automatons. had. They had. They basically looked like automatons, effectively. These two angels were also the ones that told you to go speak with ZC, the Dwarven Envoy, mm -hmm. and the Master Engineer known as Victim Smith. Mm -hmm. um, the Master Engineer Victim Smith uh, became relevant because he's able to assist the party in uh, dealing with not only high water, but the Prince has been looking into engineering and has been working on learning engineering as an aside. Um, the angels gave him the idea about automaton parts or prosthetics. There was another reason. Uh, at some point in this, we were like, need to know about the wastes, and the dwarves had yes, that's right. expeditions. Yeah. 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 The, the dwarves were the only ones that have successful expeditions into the waste. Now, mind you, to, to the humans of the Exton Kingdom, they don't know anything beyond the wastes because none of them have survived far enough into the wastes to actually return. Uh, you only have one map that was traded to the kingdom by the dwarves, uh, which is the only reason they have a map of the wastes. Um, Didn't the dwarves also say that uh, Big Toon, uh also had some information about yes. that, the wastes too, which was uh, the big reason why we went? Yes, Victune had engineered things that help with surviving in the wastes. Um, yes, and you were yeah, and you were told that he was to be found in Snowtown, which is to the north, which is basically one of the last towns in Exton before you leave the border and actually go into the wastes, which spans the entire northern border of the kingdom. Where we land some more bullshit. <laughs> in Snowtown. Right. Oh! Uh, <laughs> Simultaneous bullshit time. Yeah. So it, it effectively, it means you, yeah. you guys had to get from point A to point B real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not yet, though. There was. We, you forgot our meeting of destiny. Oh, yes! Oh my when god, you yes! The, when you went, so, <laughs> the land of the sense. gods was referenced, and, right. and it was. Also, also referred to in, in the, this encounter as the land of death adjacent. Yes. So, so this I remember the session now because it was a, it was a split screen session. Yes. So that's why I. Yeah. I, like, what is happening right now? This doesn't make any sense. So it was a split screen session. Greatron and Oscar, Oscar went to the tomb. Went to the tomb. Meanwhile. Uh, Pirate Menius and Albrecht had some dreams. <laughs> yeah, we will go. The Jeez. sky was gray. Dreams. Uh, yeah. The town was way different. This there was, was dreamy bullshit. Certainly. No, no, it wasn't our fault this shit. round. Like, Not we this were round. just there. Um. Yeah. 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 Destiny. Destiny. There was a giant city that looked like. But wasn't Fang's key? Because it was humongous. Oh god, it was. Oh. Yeah, it was yeah, endless. Yeah, I remember this. Uh, I, oh god, I yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that you guys, you guys went up into one of the taller buildings and looked around, and it was just endless city. <laughs> Following the same contours of geography as Exton. Weird. But, alright. We got um, to meet Destiny. We did get to meet Destiny. Exactly. There's something we, like... This is where we did the research on the previous council. Yes. That's we, what learned, it we learned that uh, the one that was actually special was Tristan Von Kampf. Because he's actually still the head librarian. Because who yeah. all but a uh, would decide. Real well, quick. We're in the lands of death adjacent. Let's go look up some dead people. Yeah. So Martin Phoenix was the dean of geometry and Jesus. died recently. And his spot is still open. Uh, I was aiming for it. Piotr is a nomad from... He shot a little high. So, Piotr was a nomad from an external tribe outside of the Twelve that became Exton, and was the first counselor from outside of Exton and is still alive. Uh, Carmilla Laveau 
is a fire specialist that wanted to master the raw destructive force, but is now retired. Oh god, you literally had us name these people. Yep. Yeah, he did. There, there was there was Bob, <laughs> the spirit <laughs> companion with a spirit companion named Fred. <laughs> He's dead. Uh, there was Anexius, who was an Imperialia uh, expert. With Imperialia is angels. like demonology, but it's with angels. Uh, Thorn, who discovered an affinity towards nature, but is super dead, and has a husk somewhere in the woods. Not just dead. Super, super dead. dead. <laughs> super dead. Super dead. Uh, then there was Alvern Hidrin, one of yep. Albrecht's uh, ancestors, uh, who is now dead and was an anima and mind magic specialist. Uh, then Tristan Von Kampf, head of the library, still alive and in the same position. Then Which there was questionable. Yeah, questionable that he's still alive. because uh, he's also extremely old now. Mm -hmm. Uh Froderick. He's who, also not in that position anymore. Yeah, we'll yeah, get that. Yeah, we'll get that. Uh Froderick, who uh, had a bit of a mastery in sound manipulation, Ooh, uh, this one. Yeah. is alive, but supervised as he suffers from audio hallucinations quite often. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> And then there was sometimes you're just too good. <laughs> then there was Paku Paku, Paku Paku, Paku Paku, Paku Paku. Yeah, that was his name. Wow. <laughs> Paku Paku. Paku, there, Paku. No, Paku. I'm pretty sure there was a mixture of tired and being drunk. Yeah. Th think think of the one as professor. Always. As you do. So for those who have have earned their degrees, think of the one professor that's really laid back. You swear is on the ganja. And it's just life, man. <laughs> Sanderson. No. You know what? No, I'm gonna no use it. Know that. I'm gonna use my card right now. Shut up, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's not Sanderson. It's not Sanderson. It's not Sanderson. Mm. Um, uh, this was that guy. He was uh, also the art magic specialist. He was the arts magic specialist and <laughs> still alive and retired. Uh, there was Anita of Shore Village, who was a weather witch and specialist. Uh, the notation I have on this says dead, comma, D-E-D. -E -D. Because she's from Shore Village. So everybody makes sure that she's D-E-D -E -D dead. Yep. Four reasons. <laughs> Read the damn adventure logs. <laughs> Uh, and then the last counselor of the High Water Administration was Sora Dumont, who was a biomancy uh, specialist with life magics, and died of a heart attack. It's not funny. <laughs> Dog cancer? It's not funny. <laughs> Poetic. It's not funny. Funny. I specialize in life magic. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, God, something a heart attack coronary death. The most Whoopsie! <laughs> <laughs> there may or may not have been some poison involved. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, and this is where we decided Tristan. Yeah, Tristan's person that just he still um, okay. after right after a series of of like, all right, who is who is alive now that was alive then, in the position now that was in the position then, and has a sufficient a sufficient connection to. High water to give us personal like information about high water's thought processes. Of the twelve that were just listed, the only person that fit all criteria was Tristan. Who may who is suspected of necromancy himself, so it seems like the prime candidate. So then we decide, okay, how do we get out of here? <laughs> Where is here? You know what? Let's not think about that. <laughs> How about you just wake up? Gotta wake up? Gotta wake up? <laughs> uh, yeah, we came across that weird tree, too. And that's... There was a door in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's where we met Destiny. Is we decided to walk away. We some I don't even remember how we got to the tree. I think, there was I think we might have known about Destiny. Yeah. And we're asking around for it because we knew her name. Yeah. Okay. And so we're like, where's Destin? And they're all looking at us funny. I know. Um, yeah, that part is super hazy for me, but I remember that we found the tree yeah. in the creepy woods. And me is not pleased with this. And there was a door. Sassy McSassy face. 
That was what? a session that me and Greg were doing all that because we had the other obligations. Yeah, that was the yes, you that three. Was the yeah, three. Yeah. yeah, And yeah. then the next yeah. session, it was it our short five minutes. minutes. No, it's been like 15. Oh, okay, yeah. got it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a little... He's really slow to uh, <laughs> I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> that was uh, like, man, that no. Well, it was also a lot of discussion, so I was yeah. waiting. Oh, this is where we started getting the hint about the waste because we got some information. Because we kept inciting her wrath about the Britons mm -hmm. because of the tea thing. No, we found out about the Britons from the, the Rodents. I thought it was her and the tea. No, what we found We're out... still pissed her off from okay, the tea. No, we did find something out from her, but I mean, it didn't show. Right. There may or may not be a recurring theme from this point forward in a... I mean, it didn't share. <laughs> this me wasn't much help. It's uh, like I have... Share. I have an instinct. Shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah, doesn't it was yeah, super pissed for because sucking of, uh, cock. That whole yeah. city and all the people in it were dead from our world, and so they ended up in the realm of the gods. Yes, Destiny was upset that, and this is the, this is, I mean, has put together several different facts in this conversation with Destiny. The part that was explicitly stated was that the city was the result of the death from the lands of Exton, because those dead had nowhere to go, and thus got shunted into the land of the gods. Right. That was what was explicitly stated in the conversation yeah. before a sassy McSassy phase then kicked us out and sent us home. Uh, it, it explicitly yeah, stating, I'm not one of your gods, go home. Yes. She um, said something about her... Oh, oh, she called me a priest of her brother as well. Yes. At one point. Later. I still like her. She was great. Oh my god. She's amazing. We have oh to stop by and, and say hi. But. Yes! <laughs> hey go, hey! Get out. If we literally <laughs> hallucinate together, it's like, hey! God damn it! <laughs> the third time this week! Come on! But we love you. <laughs> uh, um, we'll do a miracle, it'll be great. No, we'll slap the door, see what happens. It's great. Yeah. We love you so um, much. Yes. So sad. Things that were figured out at this point in time. Which was then later confirmed at, at a future date of the game to be the ultimate secret was the God of Secrets which was and was not Mendes was actually also not part of the original realm. Um, this is where so for the rest of the party this is where Aminius actually puts together a good degree of the cosmology as far as Aminius and I never decide that it's the land of the dead, but we do decide that it's extra real space. Um, we figure out that it's not reality. Where we are at, the lands of Exton are not reality. This is the land of the gods. Really, Destiny's realm is the land of the gods, or what should rightfully be the land of the gods. Which means the people who are dead in Exton shouldn't be dead. Uh, the extra real space is created because of death itself. So, Aminius realizes Death is first and foremost an external concept to the land of Exton. Non-native. Natively non-native, as the case may be. Uh, he may or may not be right in all of these assumptions, but this is where I'm going to get stuff together. Um, furthermore, Death's confidence in Mendes isn't actually true. Death's confidence was in a similar natively non-native being, the God of Secrets. And thus where Amenius starts worshipping the God of Secrets as opposed to Memphis, knowing that technically the same being, even though they're not. This is referenced later when Amenius does story time again, but the story is slightly different. Um... I think that's everything he gets at this point. Yeah. And then Destiny shunted you back. Yeah. Shunted you out. He's like, no! You actually still have living bodies. I can push you out of my room. <laughs> Get <laughs> out! Fuck off! I can't with these other ones because there's nowhere to shunt them to. Mm -hmm. 
Oblivion! <laughs> <laughs> Shit! The existence of real space. And and the that that's the other thing that Aminius realizes is that Aminius consciously or subconsciously decides that this is non real space. Axton is non real space, therefore there must be a real space. Right. And in the conversations with Destiny, she references Britain and and other cultures. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I think she references being British. I don't think she said Britain. Yeah. She yeah. she does reference the British. Yeah. And their tenacity for tea time. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, she's been teed out. She, uh, she sounds more teed off. Really. More, more teed off. Um, uh, which are unequivocally cultures that never existed in in the realms of Eshka, uh, the Eskin kingdom, or any tribe, or any any others. Um, I think he's changing. Eskin. 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 There's three. There's three definitive, but everybody knows what you're, it's, what it's, you're saying. <laughs> it is E-K-S-T-A-N. Yep. yep. Eskin. Yep. Um, <laughs> so you, you guys uh, both have learned. So so one team, one part of the team learns some truths about angels. And then another part of the team learns some other truths about reality. Uh, some of that team doesn't share. Some of that team does not share. On both sides. <laughs> <laughs> to anyone. That's right, I remember Korean Korean being party. so proud of you. Like, oh, bravo, sir. Bravo. 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 Uh, so then you guys went uh, and... What does, I remember you, had that a meeting, was you had a meeting with uh, ZC. Um, who was who was present in Fang's Keep. Uh, so you guys didn't have to travel very far to go talk with him. It was just locally in the city. In the embassy. Yeah, oh, yeah. you went to the Dwarven Embassy. Um, does anybody remember what happened in that conversation? Um, actual legitimate conversation? We found out that the humans are coming from the waste. No, the oh. humans came from the waste. Yes, originally. came from the wastes. Yes, yes. Okay. the first humans. The first humans actually came from the wastes before it was the wastes. Yeah. Yes. That was the important. That was the important takeaway, really. But after the elves had already vacated the area. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the elves had vacated the area to give humanity a space to grow. Yeah. That was the Elven excuse. Uh, There's some other shit. Then you guys traveled to uh, Snowtown. Snow no. Who? This is the no. Where, no. No. Because there's an Albert ascension to happen. Yep. Yes. Good. Take it. All right. So uh, we went to go speak with Tristan at the. Uh, yeah. Academy. He's in the library. Because it was on the way to Snowtown. No, we're still. In Thank no, we're still in Fang's Keep. We haven't decided to leave yet. Yeah. So, because uh, this is the scene that prompts Aminus to be like, All right, get your shit together. Let's go. We gotta leave. Like, right now. Let's oh, yeah. Go. And everyone's like, Why? I don't get it. Like, get the fuck out of the city right now. The, yeah, the, uh, before you, Yeah, this is the... I Yeah, I remember this part. Yeah, because it's not until we're on the road that Aminus explains why we have to leave. Okay, right, so before going to Snowtown, you guys had to talk to Tristan. Yep. And you had to requisition supplies from Kiksa. One of uh, the far letter. Letter. One of yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the cities. But before uh, that, yeah, we talked to Tristan. Yeah. You talked to Tristan. And by we, I mean Aminus and Albert. Go talk yeah. to Tristan. Yep. Because Aminus doesn't trust any of these fucks to do an interrogation or an interview or any sort of intelligence gathering. Yeah. As he started saying by this point forward, you all are the worst operatives ever. That's why we have an operative on key. God damn it! <laughs> the last person, the last thing you interrogated killed itself. Yep. God damn! God damn! I can't do that. Because it wouldn't be me. It would. It's so, so Aminius decides <laughs> Albert is going to go talk to Tristan. Aminius is going to go Yeah, we learned some things. Uh, Highwater was an orphan, he got sponsored. Into the academy. 
not that kind of orphan. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was not one of the queens. Or he was an actual. He was a regular orphan. So. Yeah. Orphan. Yeah. Uh, he specialized in obscure magics and was interested in all of that. Uh, just got a little bit about like what he was looking at too, and the day he disappeared, he had read from a certain book. And a lot of people died from it. And so the next thing we did was look for that book in the library. Didn't find it. I don't think. No, no we didn't yeah. find it, so we went to go ask the headmaster yes. about it. Because it might have been in the headmaster's library. Because it might have been the headmaster's library. Right. And That's so, how we get there. Yep. Okay. It was... Everybody else... Went in with, to the headmaster's room to the vault with the headmaster, and I was stuck outside. You weren't stuck. You were watching. Yeah, I was. On, watch. I was on watch yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. But no. Okay. Before that, we we also started talking about the information that we gathered from Tristan. Right. That Cassandra Highwater might have been thinking heading towards apotheosis as a goal. Yeah. Yes. That's why we needed a book. In. This is we the were part. Assigned. Oh, yes, that too. Yeah. That was not a meaning of goal, but that too. Um, yes, this is the part where we start putting it together and realizing that what Chris Hander Highwater's endgame is take over death. The part that the audience is missing, because it is not confirmed until later, uh, the group begins acting upon the supposition that Chris Hander's endgame is, and, and that Chris Hander's operating from what we all believe to varying degrees is the following. Uh, death is injured, thus creating the imbalance in the universe, thus leading to the so bleed out of power which Chris Hander is utilizing in an attempt to create his own apotheosis and take death's position. That's the working model that we've built for Chris Hander's goal and his endgame. And Again, the different individuals in the party believe the different aspects of that to various fluctuating degrees based on how much Amini is to share. Yep. <laughs> and how much other supernatural forces have shown themselves in the world and said, Fuck you! Here's reality! <laughs> Which is then somewhat contradictory to what the previous supernatural force told us. And no... Yeah. No, no, no Friday it. night. Um, so... So... That's why, in speaking to... to Chrisan or to Tristan, we realize that we need to go talk to the headmaster as soon as humanly possible. We get in. Sorry. We talk to the secretary. Mm -hmm. Did we kill the secretary? No. 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 Okay. Did we put the secretary to sleep? No. 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 no we just sent him away. Yeah. Okay. We send the secretary away. I was like, I know the secretary exited the scene, and I don't remember. I don't remember if the secretary was part of it. Oh. We couldn't figure out whether or not the secretary was part of it, yeah. and we were all assuming that he was. Yeah, we just were going to deal with him later. Yes. But we, so the we didn't have time. Was like, oh, hey, how's <laughs> it going? <laughs> yeah. Come with me and check out the vault. Yeah, the headmaster was like, oh, you're here for that book. I'm not sure. Why don't you come with me and the vault and go find out? And he was like, you are so full of shit. Uh, oh, somebody you? also did an aura reading on, on, on oh, the yeah. headmaster. Oh, that was... Was he you? I think it was you. I would have wrote it down. I think so. so. He wasn't undead. He was undead. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He was undead. Yep. I thought there was something else, though. It wasn't just undead. He was a plant from High Water. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. High Water was still controlling the college through a pro yeah. proxy. I don't know if you and I. I know I actually like this was successful. I know, right? It really well. <laughs> Where I mean, he's actually physically stealth. <laughs> he doesn't get caught. Yeah, because it was the prince or yeah. Who went inside the vault? I know I was there. Everybody I, except me. I think everybody except him. Yeah, and then Ty and I were stealth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One of you was supposed to stay out with me. But you ended up going back, like going in anyways. Yeah, it was, like, yeah, it was Aminius. Yeah, Aminius and um, 
And Oscar. I, can, I don't know what your character's name is, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Oscar. Yeah, Aminius and Oscar were supposed to stay outside because Aminius didn't have the rights to see the vault. Whereas, Saint Pyre is actually not real to most people at this point. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. So, so <laughs> the way we explain Pyre in Fang's Keep is uh -huh. Saint Pyre is an apparition that has chosen to sponsor Prince Tarant in, in a saintly fashion and make sure he sticks to the path of Idol on. I mean, this is a very hard time saying that with a straight face. <laughs> and you keep slapping me in the face with that dick. <laughs> How does your god taste? <laughs> it's so good. I don't know. It tastes like actually false reality and like this isn't actually jizz. Yeah. Um, meditate on that one for a while. <laughs> I've already meditated for like years. All I got was a demon for my trouble. <laughs> and now it's inside me all the time. So, so, Pyre isn't real. He's a prince of the blood and he is an actual... Master Sorcerer. Master yeah. Sorcerer, so these three... Two and, two and a half. half. <laughs> <laughs> We're allowed to. Absolutely, I actually have the right to go in. Amelia sneaks in. Surprising everyone at the table by actually succeeding that role. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Literally everybody. <laughs> um, I think I'm still opening stealth at that point. <laughs> so, yeah, it's on my sheet now, though. Um... Uh, I think it was my last roll. Uh, so, we get into the vault, the headmaster seals the door, proceeds to try and kill us, um, Aminus is going to do things, but then Tarot just, just fucking murders him. <laughs> it's like one shot. Dead. Head like, off. Okay. <laughs> well, so, the doors are locked, because only the headmaster can open them, so I'm like... Well, well the other thing here. was <laughs> outside the vault. Yeah, just yeah. The so... <laughs> yeah, so I put the stuff on and like, oh, I guess I'm headmaster now. <laughs> nice. Ding. And and that's while that happened like inside the vault, up. before yeah. the door opened, I'm standing up there, guarding. Shit. And I see something hurt me. Actually, it hurts me, and I go, well, though. Fuck is it? Well, why is there a knife in my kidney? Yeah, you were, you were in the hallway by yourself, and then suddenly you were in the hallway with a knife. Who was greeting your kidney? Yes. <laughs> you only eat one. Actually, my armor, like, managed to protect me for the mm -hmm. most part. Yeah. But it, it literally turned into a uh, warring match with a rodent, which is a rat like creature. Which, which does not never exist. been seen in these parts ever. or talked about in history ever. At least of an extent. And, and we, we finally get to a point where we, we can't hurt each other anymore because we're kind of like... You guys effectively grappled each other into a point where the moment either of you gave the, any give to the grapple, you both would just kill each other. Yeah. Or we'd die. One of the two. Yep. And so we're like, temporary truce? Temporary truce. Okay. And so we actually talk is like, so what are you here for? I'm here to kill this person. I'm not with him. I'm with the guys who were probably killing him after figuring out that he's that. Oh, awesome! Your best friend. But we should probably be prepared just in case. Because I don't know what's going on in there. Oh, okay. So we sat there and talked and mended our wounds a little. Had a nice chat. And a nice little chat. <laughs> nice little chat. And it's like, oh! Tell us all about, and then the dorms are like, "Hey guys, how's it going? This is my friend Eric." No, no, no! You missed the part that you named him Eric. <laughs> yeah. You have a name. <laughs> oh, I don't have a name. I don't have a name. I lost that knowledge on on the way over here from my row. I'm like, oh, I'm named Eric. Now we all have to wonder, like, what's wrong with Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Does he really so, not have any friends that he lost his friend? Now this new friend has literally replaced his only <laughs> other friend. Like, oh, <laughs> oh wait, I have this new puppy. It's fine. His, his it's name's not the same. Hey guys, this is my it's, friend. It's Eric. exactly it's the same. From another number. What is this? I'm eating it now. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. So it's from another realm. Oh god. Yeah, well, so the four of us exit the room now that Albert is headmaster. <laughs> Well. To find that in our absence, 
Oscar's gotten scratched up and has made a new friend. No, you made a new friend and named him Eric. Yep. There's a, a strong moment of contention where in the party is unsure whether or not Aeneas will actually murder Oscar in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, everyone can see the gears turning and the, like, cost-benefit analysis and the risk-to-loss ratio, like, just go working through Aeneas's head. If he killed him, he'd just be replaced. <laughs> like, and the, there's another I mean, one of him! How many are you? you? <laughs> yeah. And it's, like, finally, Aeneas just storms off. I'm not going to kill you now, but sweet Jesus. You're gonna hear the end of it tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god. In the meantime, let's get somewhere that's not here right now. Right. So we leave. We question the rodents. Rodin. Uh, the rodent. Yeah. Amenius explains why he can't have the name Eric. It's Sorry. Like... <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> and this is where the group finds out that Amenius had to pin Eric for the orphanage. Yes. Th this is where the yeah the party finds out that it was all a ruse. Eric had to be the pin in order to protect the Queen's secrets. He was. Any further investigation would have led to secrets of the Queen. Yep. And so Aeneas orchestrated for the person who had effectively raised him to be convicted and tried and convicted for two counts of murder and assigned to death row. Have we mentioned at all that you've been corrupted? Nope! Nope. <laughs> uh, you remember that time that Amenius sacrificed a human in a faith working to uh -huh. sanctify uh -huh. the ground? Yes, but Amenius, <laughs> what were the consequences between? <laughs> Nothing! Corruption! Corruption! Uh, I'm sorry, all I'm thinking is you got the shakes and flagellum. <laughs> flagellum. <laughs> It was Flagella or Palsy. I'm like, Palsy. This is how I do butter! I can no longer cut this bread for me. Oh my god! That's right! People. That's right! The Countess served steak at the dinner! Yeah! Who fed you? It wasn't me, was it? It wasn't. Okay. Oh my god. Somebody, Oscar, had to cut up his steak. Surreptitiously, mind you, so that no one would notice. Did you just I cut up your steak and then swap the plates? Yeah. Maybe. No, I, don't think so. I, I start, like, I went to try and help, but then one of the staff members came Oh, that's up right. That's right, that's right, yeah, yeah. Because it's like, oh, no, no, Oscar, you, sh you shouldn't do that, because that's, like, not good at it. Yeah. And I'm like one of the only two people that have to keep Yeah, so no one has talked about the fact that Venus is corrupted. Which certainly weighed into several calculations in that vault immediately afterwards. Well, oh, also in that whole vault scenario, we found out that Cole was itself as a spirit and is alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And that Albrecht is now fully attuned to that wherever he is. Yeah, because of the headmaster. Yeah. Because of the hat. Your life His is very awesome. very pointy hat. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. Your head that just keeps getting longer. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, pointy hat. The pointy hat, hat yeah. now it goes fancy. like up a foot and then folds all the way back down to the ground. He <laughs> <laughs> oh, wags as he walks. Uh. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have a conversation with the rodents. The rodent, the rodent tells us that he's from. Yeah, so after explaining why the rodent cannot have the name Eric. Oh, God. Why you should fuck up and die and not talk to Aeneas for several days. I ended up not talking to you several days. Uh, yes, you did! And then Aeneas was like, oh, you can learn things sometimes. So I'm like, I'm sorry, but his name's not Eric. I'm and sorry. Just stop bringing it up. Um, never speak of this again. <laughs> the. We learned from Rodin that the Rodin is from a different dimension. Different realm. Different realm. Yep. That was the proper use. Yes, different realm. He gives us the history of. Uh, British coming across the portal in the wastes to populate Exton because stuff happened. There was an implication that the Rodin dimension was not where the British came from. He was telling us about learning about that stuff, and that's how they knew about this place. Mm -hmm. But it was not the same place. I even got a letter from him. A letter? I think <laughs> Oscar and friends, this map may come in handy. It is of my home. If you find yourself there, this will be 
invaluable. Make your way to Talmex near the lake. Humans and Rodan live together in peace there. The gate to my world should be closed, but the magic used to send me here is extremely unstable. Sincerely, Eric Rodan. Yeah, so in the event that we actually wanted to travel, uh, well, in the event that they've been turned on a completely different direction, which it did. So, after the conversation with the Rodan, Aminius suddenly, like, everyone actually basically kicks into high gear because we realize that high, high water is actually fairly close to completing his plans. Furthermore, Aminius suddenly seems extra motivated because the headmaster can't leave the college once people realize he's the headmaster. So let's get the fuck out of Dodge before anyone fucking realizes. Ding. Yep. Which is where two letters were sent. Yeah. One yep. to the queen yep. telling everything that happened, and Man. one to the council <laughs> telling a truncated version of the story and appointing Tristan von Kampf as the new as the new antiquarian who basically Acts as. Acts as the headmaster anytime the headmaster's gone and is basically the headmaster's right hand. And there's an important note here that I, I added that I read Shelf life of an antiquarian's death is two fucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, because everybody wants that job. Yeah. Everybody. We two fucks. <laughs> I bargained it to, Chris, to Tristan for the information that Tristan gave us about Highwater. Yes. Yeah. Tristan's like, we were actually oh. hoping to kill the job, killed him. Yeah. yeah, you guys left hoping he would be dead by the time you got back. Yes, we, we don't know yet. Person. We don't know yet. <laughs> We're it was, out. It was still undecided if he actually learned necromancy with high water or not. Yep. Because he right. was a source of high water's resources for for books yep. on a lot of it. And I mean, he didn't feel like crying because then he'd have to open an investigation into Tristan, and that was not the goal. In any, we had a small amount of time. So we blow the fuck out of Dodge, uh, travel, show up at Snow Village. Snow Town. Snow Town. Snow Town, yeah. Um, where we proceed to have the worst social scene we have ever had the entire day. We also learned quite a bit of bullshit, ones, too. But this was, this one takes the cake. Like, like, That's even the meanest is just fucking yeah. up everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I, oh, yeah, okay. That's because it was such an alien conversation. Oh my god. Was that was that was done on purpose. At least we got it. It was an engineer conversation. Yeah. yeah. I, I was actually very proud of the way I, I ran that scene. Uh, it was it was supposed to be an alien style of conversation and the way that they were receiving information from this. And there were uh, effects in the game, in the reality of the game, that you, you really can't just describe and expect people to react to that. Like, it, it was alien. So to to do that, I actually enforced a, a round table uh, turn-based turn base for it to where, effectively, each person got to ask their question and take their... They, they could ask uh, a question, and they could also make a roll. Um, and then they had to wait until it went all the way around to receive the answers. And each each round was one course of the dinner. Mm -hmm. Further, uh, to, to set the scene, by the way, once we get into the snow village, we of course present ourselves to the local leader. Who is standing inside of a 19, uh, who meets them in, in a special room in her estate, which has a 19-point ascendant star engraved in both the ceiling and the floor tiling. The Lady Winter. Yeah. Yeah. Lady uh, Winter. Who's uh, actually an angel, and so is everybody around. Yeah, I wah, got, wah, I got her. Wah. But, like, she was, like, super angel. Yeah, I got her. No, goal like, goal everybody her. around her, like, everybody yeah. in the city was just angel. It was, it was secretly oh, yeah. a city of angels disguised as humans. where the portal was. Nicholas Cage was bad in that movie. Yeah. I got off of her with an order uh, the goal fine. of uh, that I will return my people to the throne of heaven. Yep. Yep. And we went there. Which, having the map of the waste, there's actually a spot on it marked the throne of heaven. Yeah. Dog. Dog man. Um, man, man bear pig. Man bear pig. No. <laughs> yeah, so we went towards them with some chip barrels on the wall, too. Which. Served only to reinforce what Aminius had already gathered from Destiny. Yes. 
which is why I was kind of dismissive of when you were like, Did you, do you understand what that means? I'm like, yeah, no, but I already got that. Um, I was partially wrong, too, but that's fine. Too stubborn to realize at this point. Um, yeah, we just butchered the scene. Like, we ended up giving her all of our goals and all of our methodologies. <laughs> that's right. And we got fuck all shit in return. <laughs> yep. After introducing yourselves to Lady Winter, um, you guys then go to the Foundry. Uh, you meet, uh, you're met there by uh, Sabrina, an apprentice blacksmith, who puts you in a room to wait for Vic Toon, uh, who is a master engineer, blacksmith, whitesmith, That's right. mm -hmm. and smelter. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, there's a brief conversation. Um, we hypothesize that he is not human. Right. None of us can figure out what the fuck he is. Right. At, yeah, at this point, you guys, you guys see a few things that are, don't add up, and you start getting suspicious at this point. Uh, you are invited to Vic Toon's home for dinner to see a more lifelike automaton. Uh, as um, the prince is interested in learning how to make automatons. Right. Um, let's see. The roles that were made... In this scene, uh, Dennis rolled uh, heretical doctrine and uh, discovered heaven is dead. Uh, Jeff did an aura reading on Lady Winters, uh, getting the belief, I will return my people to the throne of heaven. Uh, Kyle failed his aura reading on Lady Winters, uh, looking for her intent. Uh, Greg did second sight on Lady Winters uh, for magical effects present on her, and there, the answer came back no. Uh, B uh, used the blood, or her vampiric powers, uh, on there. Uh, through, uh, through Pyre's vampiric powers, Pyre can sense if one is faithful or not, or basically has the faith trait. And Lady Winters had the faithful uh, trait. Uh, Greg also did an aura reading, uh, determining that Lady Winters is alive and of this plane, and had an aura of holiness. Uh, oh, minor miracle of secret communication. Obstacle five, faith. Seven successes. Party taken into the dark forest on a path leading to Victim's estate. That was where you guys first walked through. Yeah, it was, uh, it was on the way to the shadow <laughs> from from the foundry to Vic Toon's estate. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we could have just walked. <laughs> we could have. We could have, could have, could have just, just walked. We needed. We needed the oh, time. No, we didn't need the time. You needed, needed the, the privacy cover and the privacy. We needed the privacy. Yeah, that's right. Amenius prayed for privacy so that we could speak candidly about the weirdness that happened at the foundry. Without being overheard by fifty different people, because I mean, you believe that everyone is spying all the time for anyone. Yep. I mean, you're not wrong. I'm not. Uh, it's why I'm alive. At this point, it was really, really dark. Uh, so, two people did so. did two of the dumb. All right. There were two dumbs. There this were two was, dumbs. This was a session of dumb, and it wasn't like intentional dumb. It was just we did things, and then we'd stop and be like, "Oh, that was dumb." <laughs> Or we'd roll and it was not good. No, it was one person doing two domes. That is true. It was the yes. prince both times. Yeah. <laughs> so in but the dark kind of forest, like, yeah. the prince wanted to be helpful and let people be able to see the path. Oh, God. Uh, Which Amenius said, follow me and you will be on the path. Do not stray. Do not stray from the path. Do not listen to anything that is not on the path. Do not look at anything that is not on the path. Look at the person in front of you. Follow me single file. We'll be fine. So the first thing the prince does... <laughs> Second thing. No. No. You lit a torch. No. That's when no, you... that was later. No. no, that was later. Yeah. yeah. The first thing you did. That's right. The first thing you did do was second sight. Yeah. Because we did walk for a ways, talking about what we had seen, trying yep. to soothe the atmosphere. Wasn't working. Was well, not working was not working. Noises started happening. Oh, yeah. Things started moving. And then Tarant was like, you know, maybe we should 
get so I'm afraid that I'm going to lose the path because I'm gonna get distracted. So let me light a torch. <laughs> Wasn't it his sword? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, yeah. it was the sword. Oh, yeah. you, he lit his you flames. cast light. Yeah. When in doubt, light it on fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Wah, wah. Oh, it's fine. fine. So, and then we went shooting towards... So for the audience at home, the Dark Forest is symptomatic and related to Aminius' corruption. Not a single fucking soul has figured that out, Aminius included. Okay, Great Trent shot up towards something. Yeah. Because he looked after lighting the torch. I never actually moved. What? Yeah, he didn't physically move off. Yeah. Path, yeah. Which is why he's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> or at least still with you. Yeah. He would still And then been he activated alive. second sight on his way back vision wise. Oh god, that's right. Yeah. And that was the second oh whoops. Uh you made deep intimate eye contact with one of the things in the dark forest, mm -hmm. and it offered you a trend. Um and spontaneously, the prince's arm was gone, yeah. feeling all of the pain of an arm being ripped off. Because it was. While simultaneously being implanted with knowledge. A secret. Do you remember what you were given? The secret? Yeah. No. Oh. You lost your arm for that! I know. I don't remember it. You didn't write it down? Take notes, people. <laughs> I don't know if I did. If I did, it's in a different notebook. You I'm pretty sure you wrote it down in, in the notebook that you were using. You it. lost your arm! <laughs> yeah, but it's just part Well, of I also time. gained... Um, now it is! Uh, engineering from her. Uh, from it, too. Oh, that's, that was it. You, yeah. you learned certain secrets of engineering, and it, it unlocked engineering for you. And okay. now you can Nonetheless, your own arm. Yeah. We're pretty sure you forgot the secret that you gave your eye for, too. So, uh, that might have been Ipsum Algorian. Actually, I don't Yeah, just the, that's the secret. Oh, okay. Oh, no, that was the secret itself, was the art of Ipsum Algorian. Yeah, because no one knows how to do it. Yes. That's, that's a new thing now. Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. You're not sure what realm that secret comes from. Nope. Because... I don't even know what that thing was. <laughs> well, you know that you're not the first to do it. Oh, okay. It's just, it was not a thing in this realm. Oh. Ooh. That doesn't mean it wasn't a thing. Cool. More okay. secrets in the dark box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the eyeball has not touched. Yeah. yeah. You're fine, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> so then... Don't need one. <laughs> then you guys got to Victune's uh, estate. estate. I finally got the aura read on him. Yep. Yes. Yep. Oh, on yes, this was also the part oh, where... Oh, that's right! You are the only person who has some understanding of what's uh, actually going on. Son of a yeah. bitch, he's dark vested. Yeah. Yup. Yeah. Um, this is this is where Albert realizes that Aminius has not been sharing, and actually may or may not know more things than he's telling anyone. And no one is surprised by this, but it's now reading in his aura, which is fairly significant. Right. Uh, this is also the point where a superior quality longsword was stolen by a street urchin. <laughs> that it, chase he's fucking caught nervous. trying to get away. Yeah. Yep. Fucking uh, is this is this the second one so far? <laughs> oh yeah, and at first you guys mistake uh, Lady Winter's interest to be aligned with Highwater and the gate. Yep. Um, you think that she's working with Highwater initially. Uh, and then we have the conversation with Victor, and we're like, oh! Nope. Wow. Uh, or we gave all of our information and got wrong answers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody also did an aura read for the future on Victune. Oh, uh, yeah. Saw Victune congratulating Lady Winters upon regaining their home in the throne of heaven. Yep. That's a good omen now. Back then it was weird. Yeah. <laughs> they, they literally took that as part of uh, that as an omen of high water success. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so. We know better now. The <laughs> awkward, awkward conversation over dinner. The first course was soup. An ornate salad of various nuts and berries followed after. So the, the first course soup uh, was kind of a basic conversation. We hadn't gone into the rounds yet um, and things were still a bit natural. Mm -hmm. um, then, as the second course was served, and it was revealed that the servants were lifelike automatons, also angels, but not necessarily, um, we went 
uh, Jeff, uh, who learned uh, from Aura Wise uh, that it wasn't geometry, uh, it was that the aura was possibly repaired, healed, or created around Victum um, and and Victum's estate. Um, that it, it wasn't a basically wasn't a form of magic that was native to humans. Uh, Dennis didn't make a roll at this point, was just observing. Oh. You were also praying. You That's were, right. I was doing something entirely yep, different. You, you were praying in the background. Yep. Kind of quietly to yourself. Uh, B. Uh, B rolled doctrine and identified that these beings were possibly a demon or an angel. Uh, <laughs> Greg did an oral wise on Victoon and determined it was not a human. Was not alive, and was not dead, nor undead, nor unalive. Having had several auras and things, several different types of examined. Kyle did an aura reading for a trait, and the aura looks back at Kyle. <laughs> like, what you doing? He had, he had zero success. <laughs> like, who are you? Swirly colors. Where are you? <laughs> yes, I understand everything. You? I'm going to go hit my head against uh, this wall. <laughs> the third course... The third course was an array of golden carrots, broccoli, fried potato cubes, seasoned with exotic desert seasonings. Was a spicy. I remember being I'm so glad we hungry. haven't gotten to the point where I can't feed myself yet. <laughs> right? Um, uh, a few of you came to the recognition... Uh, realization that the aura belonged underneath the knowledge of heretical doctrine. Unfortunately, your heretical doctrine specialist is busy. <laughs> Sorry! Greg did another aura reading, uh, detecting the presence and nature of a spirit, uh, which confirmed there are angels present with an effective spirit strength of 6 out of 10, but they weren't spirits. Um, B attempted to convince uh, Victune he can't comprehend everything the party's been through. <laughs> I still fucking believe that shit. Higher. <laughs> Dennis was still praying no something. Uh, Jeff, secret, 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 secret! <laughs> Jeff secret. used Imperialia to confirm Victune is an angel. Uh, the fourth course was... What did I do that round? It, mm. uh, I think you were the one that recognized the... You were the one that recognized it belonged under heretical doctrine. Okay. Um, Who's gonna look at people doctrine? Keep going. Dude. Yes. <laughs> uh, the fourth course was served steaks. That's uh, the one I couldn't... Jeff... Jeff getting into more of a team spirit. Albrecht used rhetoric to distract Victoon from huh. too much detail about the party's happenings, history, and quests. Oh, I text this was the one where it's like, like, I was going to help the prince, but then you're like, no, and so you tried to help the prince. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, and, and you're yeah, like, I'm you're like... like <laughs> <laughs> that's right! Oh, my God! Like, <laughs> like, oh, yeah. okay. that is, that is or assisted with it. <laughs> right, right, right. I, and that's why it was etiquette, because you couldn't help the prince, because you it would be weird because you are a landed noble, whereas I'm a fucking nobody according to Big Tune. Yeah. Also busy. It's like but fuck. I was a noble <laughs> saint wizard. Right. Like yeah. I'm the only one who can actually cut your stake and not raise a fucking right. eyebrow. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, and your fuzz. The the obvious rhetoric did not distract Big Tune as it was an obvious distraction. <laughs> um, and Big Tune very very carefully tangoed with words. Right back to where Elric was trying to keep him from being. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, he's continuing to pray. Pyre, at this point, got kind of... It, his stake was rare, and you just... <laughs> you kind of got focused on the stake. Um, Greg and Ty Kyle both tried doing an aura reading on Amenius. <laughs> <laughs> they were all like, really like yeah, so for a die trade. <laughs> like, what is he to doing? To try to figure out what the fuck was going on. <laughs> Why can't he cut the stake? And <laughs> both of them failed. 
So now uh, this is Albrecht is the only one who knows that there is corruption in those veins. <laughs> now, this is the running theme because every time Tyrone has tried to overread Amenius, he just gets this weird, like, shadowy miasma. Like, you get nothing. <laughs> nothing. Like, none of this is solid or giving you anything. <laughs> And then Albrecht is like, oh yeah, he's corrupt as fuck. Well, <laughs> he's, he's seven shades, not okay. Uh, it was, it was <laughs> after, after, like, it was after this. this. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then the sixth course and dessert, or no, I'm sorry, the fifth course, uh, blood sausages and bread pudding. Uh, Kyle, you didn't do anything during that phase. Um, Greg did an Imperialia. Uh, None of this fit in any of the angelic choirs that you had previously learned about. Um, it wasn't matching up. These are confirmed angels, but it doesn't match lore. Um, Pyre did religious history and figured out that these angels predate Eidolon and was the type of angel that taught about how to create Eidolon with things that you've learned from the queens, yep. the original religious history are the angels of Eidolon taught the queens about Eidolon. <laughs> <laughs> but now you, you, pieced, you had pieced together that, no, they, they taught humans how to use faith to create a god to then give faith power. Fantastic. We see how well that's worked out. Right? Uh, Amenius was still praying. Oh. Quietly. Yep. This is where you did your ancient history. Um, um, did you really write Amenius, Darth Vader? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Dark Bested. Yes. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just as close. Also, I mean, to be fair, it's after midnight. <laughs> close enough. Close enough. We, are, we are this close. Like, we're, we're super close, close now. But I mean, yeah. Star with Vader. I mean, Amenia Star. Are we really? Is it really that wrong? I think. Yeah, right. There's like two pieces. Anti At least, well, Darth Vader like re redeemed himself. I don't think Amenius is ever going to. He's just keep going I think Amenius. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends on what you think redemption is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's all, right. it's all up to interpretation, right. really. The, the interpretation changes as you go down to. <laughs> right. So yeah, I mean, at one point, down I learned that Roden were actually once common. Yes. And then got some stuff about the Elven accounting. Yes. Where firstborns, firstborn, taught them by angels of heaven at the, uh, I think that was Heart of This World. Something about that. And it's a, I need better anyway. Yes. <laughs> oh, a part of this world. They are a part of this world. Yeah. Not bound to it, just a part of it. The, yeah. Uh, the sixth course, dessert, which was cobblers and cream. I waited till dessert. Like, yeah. give me some credit. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeff did an obstacle three aura reading uh, for what spell is activated by the angel, and it was persuasion. Um, and it was at this point that the party actually had figured out that Prince Tarant had been under the effects of a persuasion spell from the angel. <laughs> hey, the wizard eventually think figured it out. Yeah, and and you were broken out of it, and that kind of s staggered you for the moment. Like you were like, I no longer feel like answering your fucking questions. <laughs> what the hell? What's that for? Right, because you spent the whole dinner like just telling him everything. Yep. yep. But I mean, he's like, oh, this is not okay. <laughs> not and okay. That's why Amenius was breaking. The whole <laughs> time. Uh, Pyre figured out what what. Amenius was doing it the last <laughs> minute. And, and prayed with him. Yeah, I was like, what are you do- Oh, I'm down. Let's do this. Bam, let's go. Kyle did another aura reading on the prince. Tried to get a belief, but ended up receiving anything in pursuit of my goals as the answer. That was one of his beliefs. Mm -hmm. You had failed the role. It was actually a twisting of one of his beliefs. Yeah. Who's? Oh yeah, it was only a section of What it. was the belief that he thought? He, the, what he got was anything in pursuit of my goals. Yeah. Oh. Okay, when he yeah, read a belief yeah. on you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
He thinks he, he read a belief on you. We as the players know you fell that role, it's a twist of the belief. So no, that's not one evil. of the prince's beliefs. <laughs> it was a small portion Buddy, you ain't like white by any means. <laughs> Who is in this party? Oh my god. Right? None of us. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> Amenius finished his prayer, performing a consecration of the estate. Well, Consecrating like, you know Neptune's what? estate to Mendez. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like Amenius starts this dinner and think he isn't human. None of this is safe. What can I do to help the party? Oh, you know what? Let's consecrate this place. For a long time. Let's see what happens. Well, uh, what happened was... The secrets got revealed. <laughs> uh, the entirety of the estate's staffing and Victune were revealed in their angelic clockwork forms. Yeah, I, I like spirit nuke to the area. I was like, you know what? The estate changed, yep. revealing that it was similarly constructed as the angels were. Um, and Victune was not very happy about it. <laughs> but we had cobbler. But you had cobbler. Uh, <laughs> Could have been worse. Could have been worse. Oh, you also made a deal to make a new orphanage in um, Snowtown mm -hmm. uh, as a result of uh, dealing with Victune. Mm -hmm. um, after Victune was revealed, the conversation went a little bit back towards normal. And you guys did actually start... You guys got enough information to realize that Victune and Lady Winters were not working with Highwater. That their plan had nothing to do with Highwater or what he was doing and that Highwater's actions actually would also prevent their their goals. Mm. God, I remember like the emotion of that time where we were just like, fuck, we wasted all this time, but also, thank God. I know, right? Like, yes. oh, this was totally a, uh, well, I mean, it wasn't a waste. It was a waste. Hey, we got more finish out of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and that letter, that letter that you have. Yeah, that's uh, where I got it. Yeah, he originally, it originally went to Amenius because yep. he was the first awake. Yeah. And he hid it for a while. Oh, I did? Yeah. Oh. That's weird. Because Amenius. I mean, like, yeah. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> it was the letter and the map, two separate pieces. So then you handed me the letter. I'm like, oh, cool. Wait, where's the map? <laughs> and you're like, oh, this one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, you guys got the supplies you needed uh, for basically a five-month um, expedition. Yeah. Kilo, oh, yeah. uh, we actually remembered Keo at that point. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. We That's did. when we yeah. remembered him. You used uh, Keo, uh, Keo's blessings of travel uh, and made your way. Mm -hmm. um, you managed to get to the bottom of the plateau of the Forbidden City uh, before having to stop. Uh, you guys spotted an encampment of orcs about 150 yards away. You guys had managed, like, it was kind of one of those things where you come around a rock face and go, oh! Yeah. Like, you were close. Um, Pyre, using vampiric powers, walked up the cliff face. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that happened. Found a cave that was artificial, and had ramps, a, a ramp and a stairwell, staircase, or stairs carved into it, going down. Yeah. Uh, you followed that down to find where it basically met the, to the bottom, but had been covered in sand. Um, and oh. <laughs> basically punched the fuck out of the entrance. I also forgot I did that. Yeah. Yeah. You, like, blasted <laughs> some sand. <laughs> you did. Made an opening. Yep. Uh, after going back in, Amelius used uh, the Faith of Secrets to recover the secret entrance. Secret, secret, secret. Uh, secrets. You guys found obsidian obelisks at street corners with strange writings on it. Uh, you guys came to the conclusion that they were street signs that also produced light. 
as the evening was coming to... Yeah, we're getting there. Uh, yeah, I'm like, wait, I know what happens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you guys camped in the buildings, Amenius and Pyre went off to one building to sanctify it? Yeah. I don't know, building... <laughs> you walked <laughs> into that building after we were done. Yeah, I, I wrote insta-filed. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oops. Yeah, the priest of the sec of, of secrets and the the dark yep. invested corrupt priest of secrets and the vampire that he helped make sat in the deadest place on earth and looked out over the rest of what they had known to be creation and decided the only appropriate response right now is to have sex. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm wrong. Tell us uh, wrong, Internet. The next day, you guys uh, found a path to uh, the upper level, uh, which the map named as the Seat of Heaven, or the uh, Seat of Heaven, Throne of Heaven. Um, we also realized that we need to stay indoors during the high points of the day. Yes, uh, where you guys super hot. Stay sheltered from the heat of the day. Uh, uh, going through various tunnels from building to building, um, up until two hours before sunset. You guys basically did that to get as close as you could um, to basically the palace. Uh, when you got to the palace, uh, you knocked to get in. Oh yeah. Um, yes, we were polite as fuck. Yeah, we were polite as fuck. And, and upon knocking to get in, there was a chuckle, and Death was amused and pleased at your politeness. Mm -hmm. And so opened the doors and said, come in. Yeah. Uh, where you guys went through a room that had one throne with two stairs behind it, which led up to another throne room with two thrones and three stairs going further, to four thrones and five stairs, eight thrones and nine stairs, back to four thrones and five stairs, two thrones and three stairs, and one throne with no stairs, where upon the throne sat death, bleeding. Yep. A huge wound in his side. So during several conversations, the group had discovered that um, verified and rejected certain pieces of information. And the new cosmology thus was that death was still extra real, as in natively non-native, again, um, had been wounded by the elves' attempted uses of necromancy. And or, not necessarily wounded by, but the wound enabling the party as a whole is not certain which one is the chicken or the egg, the wound or necromancy. Um, but the elves didn't make shit any better, is the long and the short of that. Um, they allowed necromancy in the world, that was then what allowed the gateway to be opened. Because the gateway fluctuates based on necromantic energy, which is then what allowed humans to cross into Exton, a place where they should not have been in the first place. Um, yes, so Death's wound was powering the necromancy that Highwater was using. Highwater's endgame was, in fact, to take over Death. Um, or his own apotheosis, become death. Which it was, it, it was for good reason? In his head. In his head it was, yeah. In his head. Yeah. There were, again, this is one of several things happening in Aminus' head that wasn't shared. Aminus didn't share. There were, no. Aminus and Tarant actually had several conversations about this. Yeah. About how there were several different ways that this could go. And the only right answer for continuation of existence the way we knew it was for us to step in, stop by water, save time. Mm -hmm. And see what we can do to help heal him. And like to a right point. Well, I, no, no, that was something we told you. <laughs> that was not something we ever intended to do. Yeah. <laughs> they wanted to not continue to sustain death in a state of dying. Yes. Because, because that means no change. Because death's dying meant that humans could stay. Mm -hmm. If death got better, humans no longer belonged there. We'd be shunted back somewhere else. Somewhere else that yep. we didn't know. We, and we, Some British place. Wah, wah. Maybe. 
Maybe. Maybe. Maybe. We're much more amenable to that now. Yeah. UK, if you're listening. Um. Sponsorship? <laughs> Sponsor us, UK. UK. <laughs> I meant for citizenship. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that too. Please take us. <laughs> You can just airlift this house. It's <laughs> like a whole It'd be really rad. It'd be, be great. Really rad. Um, yeah, no, so that's the thing that we told you was that the solution was that teratinomies came to, that uh, they might or might not have shared to various degrees, was that what we needed to do was maintain the status quo. We couldn't let high water become death because a human taking the role of a cosmic entity would lead to unpredictable results at best. Because human could possibly die. Yes. That did actually sure. feature into our... No, that did feature into our understanding because a human would be more likely to be wounded and thus it would just feed into this cycle over again. Yes. And we did have that conversation. However, now we know there's not just one way of becoming... A god. A god. Or immortal. Or, you know, just not dying ever. Yeah. I... That, yeah, it got a belief after the last time Amenius realized the nature of reality. Mm. Oh yeah, after the meeting with Destiny, that's when he got the belief. Even the lowest can rise to the stars. That's code for Amenius apotheosis. <laughs> um, yes. So we realized that we could, and death confirmed that we could sit the thrones of heaven. Yes. It would alter us fundamentally and it would alter the world fundamentally in ways that he didn't explain, but... But it was also the way he said it that it was almost instinctually that the world that would be altered fundamentally was not your the world you were born in. Yeah. That some other place was more predominantly reality. More really real. And it would be more affected by the actions of this. Yeah. So we... Um, we confirmed that we had lived our entire existence within Beth's realm, a.k.a. the afterlife. Yep, we were um, born in the afterlife. We were born in the afterlife. We were creatures of the afterlife. Death's wound was... Re oh, that's right. We did learn where the wound came from, and that it wasn't the elves' fault, but we still blamed the elves. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're borderline racist that way. <laughs> um... We learned that the wound came from real reality right. losing sight of their worship of the gods. Turning their faces away from the gods, away from this way of existence that has the same. Isn't it like our against reality? the god of and concept of death? No, it was general. all of them. All of them. Okay. In general. In essence, what had happened was, hum or what we then as a group decided in discussions afterwards, what had happened was humans had moved away from their worship of the gods. They had decided that they alone would be responsible for their own destiny and stopped paying proper homage to the gods that actually ruled the world. Um, they put their faith in a singular Singular. Uh, no, no, that wasn't part no, of it. No, that, no, no. Okay. Oh, I'm just being a grammar Nazi. Yeah, no. Um, the... So, Death gave us the mission. He would send us into reality and fend off high water while he's at it. Only for so long. Um, while we fixed the problem. That was the deal I was given. Which is to say that we now have to go into reality, which we've decided was yeah. super. Yes. Um, so, uh, what the party knows is that they're going to reality. Mm -hmm. And that they are going into a point in time which is a, a turning point in the relationship between humans and the gods. Uh, it is taking place in the general Sumer area, and Mesopotamia. Yeah, Mesopotamia, and Ur. Mm -hmm. Uruk. Uruk. So yeah, uh, the the next next Friday we will be starting season two, and 
the party will be finding itself in transition between heaven, whether they believe it's heaven or not, uh, and Earth and Sumer. Approximately, what, 3000 BC? Give or take. Just about. Yeah. Or what the exact year? Well, year range was. Well, you also have the difficult choice of do we go with the estimated date that the tablets were written? Or do we go with the estimated date that the story is supposed to have taken place? Well, we do actually have estimated dates for the life of Yep. And the rumors that they found is turned. Yep. Really? Yeah. I don't think those were ever confirmed, though. Well, war zones. Yeah. Unfortunately, that was the that was the part of the discovery was the understanding that there would be a way to verify that. For and the hope that it would still be there. <laughs> wah, wah, wah.